No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Good morning and welcome to South Carolina. That's the scene from oh, a little earlier this morning, just after first light, take off at Drare Island State Park for the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray here near Columbia, South Carolina. Third stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. We have cut the field down to 50 today. They are gunning for 10 spots in tomorrow's final championship Sunday. Tommy Sanders here with Mark Zona and, and Z. I think we should start out by letting everyone know that we are contesting this thing on absolutely one of the hottest tournament lakes in the country. Absolutely right, Tommy Sanders. Coming off a pretty tough Bassmaster Classic here on FS1, where every bass pretty much mattered. That is not the case in this tournament right now. Looking at Lake Murray right here in Columbia, South Carolina. And the one thing you could say, it is not one of the best lakes in the Carolinas. Right now, it is one of the best lakes in the entire country. Tons of big bass in the it, it, to, to put into perspective, if you catch a three pounder about a 17 inch bass, does not mean a whole lot, especially looking at that leaderboard right there, Tommy Sanders. Yeah, and on top of that leaderboard, a South Carolina angler, much celebrated Patrick Walters, who actually won a college national championship right here at Lake Murray several years ago. Another celebrated angler right behind him, former classic champ and angler of the year, Mike Iaconelli, has had a great tournament, a great season, sort of a rejuvenated Mike Iaconelli in play today. Hunter Shryock, Jason Williamson, and Brandon Cobb. Let's take a look at this incredible playing field 50,000 acres ah. of Lake Murray and just just performing superbly this week yeah, absolutely Bassmaster Elite Series has not been here for over a decade looking at your Minn Kota unlock the lake about 50,000 acres of water to play with here our takeoff is up in your upper left hand corner Drear Island State Park and really from Drear Island State Park to the right down to the dam that is going to be the major player a lot of our anglers focused on that main section of the lake from the state park down to the dam. And the one thing that you, you look at that right there, the primary forage, the blueback herring, here is the best way to put it. The largemouth in this lake live to chase and kill that poor little fella. We are gonna see a lot of that today on Bassmaster Live. Lots of food for these these great bass here to eat there. The blueback herring is uh, so, so good. It makes the fishing, drives the fishing in so many ways for so many anglers. To let you know what's going on so far this week, let's take you back to day one of four days of fishing in Kentucky's Matt Robertson. Incredible 25 and a half pounds on that day. He really found the big ones. And day two, it would be Drew Benton. A former champion on the Bassmaster Elite Series from down at Lake Travis in Texas looking for his second win. Great, great two days for Drew Benton. 23 pounds each day, 23 pounds plus yesterday, almost 23 and a half. Exactly, and Drew Benton, one of the anglers not focusing on that blueback herring bite, kind of focusing more on the actual largemouth that are spawning and made the comment, yes, man, I think I am running out of fish. And late yesterday afternoon after Bassmaster Live was on, Drew Benton finding well, a few more locked on, so doing something different than a lot of the other leaders in this event. Well, so great to have you here. Happy Saturday morning to you. Happy the weekend is here and a great, great event in progress right now. If you want action out on the water, that is all that we have been seeing for the past couple of days. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon for this Marathon Bassmaster Elite. Tommy Sanders here with Ronnie Moore, Mike Sukon, and, and Mark Zona. And, and Zia, I want to get it back to you real quick. This seems to me to be a tournament. Things are so tight here. This is one you, can, you cannot afford to falter to much of any degree on any one of these days. No, and really, by this time of every Bassmaster event, we kind of start to handicap, who, who, who are you looking at to win the tournament? These guys are catching so many bass, it's hard to predict who could win this event. The X factor is today. We are three days into this event, and weather is moving in. This is the first day that we are going to see wind, and a lot of your leaders said when it gets windy right now on Lake Murray, we're really going to catch them and forget 
even how good the fishing was the first two days of this tournament. Today is going to be a fun day on FS1. Very much looking forward to it. And Ronnie Moore, uh, you and Mark Zona both said the guy to look out for in your mind is the local Patrick Walters, just dealing with the circumstances, the changes as they occur. We have a great top 10, some of the best sight fishermen, some of the best finesse anglers, and we've got a couple Carolinians. We've got Patrick Walters, Jake Whitaker, Brandon Cobb, and Jason Williamson. And the key with that is normally there's a local advantage for guys fishing in their home state or a lake that they're familiar with. But on blueback herring bodies of water, it seems like those anglers who know that style of fishing can really excel. And today, the, or the first two days, the bite wasn't as good as we, they probably had hoped and yet it was outstanding today with the wind. They may pull some secrets out. We have not seen that they've been holding back. And with that wind, we could see some big weights, maybe some of the biggest all week. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. And Such, I know you follow the history of lakes. We talk about lakes being up and down. It's definitely up now, but you can tell us a little bit about the background of it. Yeah, in the early 90s, David Wharton won one of his two events here with 88 pounds, 22 pounds a day, big five, five pound average. And our two elites in 2008 and 2011 were about 15, 16 pounds a day average. And now we're back up to almost, they're on pace for 90 pounds. What's going on here? This lake is on the high, high side. We're loving it, that's for sure, whatever it is. We always love it when guys can find different ways to get the job done. This lake offers these anglers so much, so we're going to get out on the water right now. In fact, we go to uh, starting the day in, uh, in the top 10, Brock Mosley of Mississippi. What a great career. One of these anglers who can be characterized as one of the best never to win a tournament. He has five second places with the Bassmaster Elite Series in his history. Well, uh -oh. early. Skeeter Boats, big fish alert. BFA, not Bachelor of Fine Arts. <laughs> Bachelor of Fine Fishing here. All right. We got Matt Airy, a seven pounder. Vibe for our Phoenix Boats Big Bass of the Week. Third one. Stay hooked up. Oh, God. Begging. Stay hooked up, please. Come here. Uh -uh. Well, good God. Stay hooked up, baby. She ain't done. She ain't done. Come here, girl. Come here. Come here. Come here. No. 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 Oh. Yeah! Woo! Yeah, baby. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Look at that Bill Lewis ATV square bill. Choked. Get us off. Brock Mosley, but definitely the kind you want to show up at the weigh-in this like afternoon a with and get five of those. Here, You're going to be in great shape for Championship Sunday. Let's get out to the man who led after day number one with 25 and a half pounds, Matt Robertson. There's a good one. Feels good at least. I ain't feeling so big now unless he's running at me. Feels big. I don't know. No. It's a decent one, not huge. Gutted that thing, buddy. God almighty. Yeah, I don't even know if I'm like, I don't know if I'm like, God almighty. One thing to watch on FS1, you'll see a lot of these anglers focusing on those main lake points, very, very shallow one to three feet of water and predominantly water temps in about, call it 63 all the way up to 70 degrees in the back of some of these pockets. He's good. Let's go further back through her. That's gonna work on that one. Meanwhile, let's get over to Hunter Shryock, angler from Tennessee. Fifth year with the Bassmaster Elite Series. 
put great on a day. show with great that bait fish. right there yesterday and oh, a couple man. key dock fish that he was able to land. Sometimes it doesn't go your way with how he was fishing those docks, but it did yesterday. Oof. Mm. Digging. Oh, it's a back hook. Oh gosh, I should have boat flipped her. Oh, I should have boat flipped her. No, Hunter. Hunter. Yes. Oh, she was hooked good. Good morning, folks. Bassmaster Live, three pounder. Finally got one off the tree. Yeah, I could have boat flipped that one all day. <clears throat> Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm just so excited to get a bite on this bait that early. It's the earliest I've done it. No, get out of that. Yeah, you're good. It was just sitting in there. Just so jacked up to get a bite on that bait because Dude, it can go down in a hurry. They're catching so many like that. That's a fun way to watch a guy catch fish. We look forward to that. Here's our leader in the first two days, Drew Benton. He's given us a big one to start every day so far. And you can see Drew Benton definitely changing up this morning the way he fished days one and two. things that's good for Drew Benton with it being a little cloudier, a little windier, maybe not ideal sight fishing conditions. If he can steal a couple kickers from this herring spawn or top water, that's just less fish he has to burn later in the day. Absolutely. And if you really look at how some of those fish had the bait early, Brock Mosley and Matt Robertson, they are biting in a big way this morning compared to yesterday and Thursday. The weights, of course, very, very tight. So many opportunities for all the 50 anglers left in our field. I think the full field started within about 11 or 12 pounds of each other today. That is a recipe for a lot of movement in and out of the top 10 in our leaderboard right now, though it's South Carolina's own Patrick Walters on top. We will be right back. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Humminbird. Mercury. Nitro Boats. And by Bass Pro Shops. Fish and history helps sometimes and it hurts. And it was to kind of put both of those together this week. Fish new water and fish the stuff that kind of got me to where I'm at today. My goal was to be just consistent through the whole week. Um, I think my bite was going to hopefully, was going to get better, but um, it's just, you can't, Murray's fishing so good right now, you can't go catch 14 or 16 pounds yeah. and stay in it. You know, you got to catch 17 to 18 every single day just to be consistent. And that was the goal was just, you know, play the long game and be consistent all week. Well, all the uh, native knowledge, the uh, local knowledge, a boatload of talent, and a great mind for the game. Patrick Walters certainly one of your favorites out here today as we take a look at Lake Murray. Our playing field for the Marathon Bassmaster Elite. Our live coverage continues on this third day of fishing. Let's get out. Let's get out to Patrick Walters right now. What's that one? Mm. 
Oh, wow. Don't be a striper. The one that busted back there was legit like a pound and a half. I wasn't even gonna throw it back there. A little better. Oh, he's telling me. Nice fish right there for Patrick Walters. And again, all of our anglers able to keep their best five bass. And while that is a good one, Tommy, that is not one you are going to want at three o'clock today before the weigh in. Well, three pounders won't get you there. No. Well, that 20 pound mark is going to be uh, going to be the standard for being in the game. It has been for the first two days. That is for sure. How about you talking about consistency? It's weird. Well, Patrick Walters talking about the importance of it, but the man who embodies it out here this week is the man we're going to right yes. now. The rookie, Joyo Fujita, 22 pounds and six ounces each of the first two days. Very young Japanese angler fishing a lot deeper than the rest of our leaders in this tournament. Caught some great big ones yesterday late in the afternoon. Yes! <laughs> Five pound. Oh, big bass. Three. Yeah. Late start, but big fish. Tommy, if you're going to have mechanical issues that delay you about an hour this morning, less fishing time, you might as well start with a 5-3. That's a great way to start. And now, you might as well start with a 5-3 no matter what yeah, the situation. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's ideal. It didn't really look like a 5.3. <laughs> it looked a lot bigger than that, didn't it? Looked, it looked like a lot bigger than 5.3. But as Ronnie said, he had about an hour worth of a mechanical issues this morning. So that is definitely the way you want to start. And he also had a slow start yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. So head of pace back to Hunter Shryock. Giant. Absolute unit. You got your stuff out of the seat. Get out of the boat. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Come here, fish. No, no, no. You ain't going. No. No, no, no. Done yet. Oh. Okay, okay. Yes. Thank 
you, Lord. Come on, Brandon. Four more bites. How's it feel? <sighs> A relief. <laughs> A relief. Um, yeah, I don't, I just, I gotta run with what, with what it's given me, I guess, and I think we're going to have an opportunity this afternoon with that top water. So, a fish like that, this early, just doing stuff that I know how to do, I guess. Oh. First rock out here since 2018, looking for his first Elite Series win, and boy, he feels comfortable here. He is getting to do exactly what he wants to do. Over to John Cox. Yeah. And John Cox, one of the best shallow water anglers on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Slow day one for most of the day. Only had two fish till about 11 o'clock. Salvaged that with just under 19 pounds and a big stringer over 20 yesterday. Probably gonna have to get rid of him, but. Yeah, he's not bleeding bad, so. Should be all right. Hey, that's one bite right there. Dude, I wasn't even paying attention. I was looking, I was looking, I wasn't even paying attention. I should have been paying attention, you know? Seeing that's my job today is to pay attention. Yeah, that's my thing. I'm so distracted. Tommy, the tone starts to change for some of these anglers the first two days where I need to survive because I don't want to get passed by in the standings and miss the cut. Today, so the more four or five pounders, the more you think you have a shot to win possibly oh, your sure. first elite event. And, you, and you'd be right. You can tell that with your Kyoya and, and Hunter Shryock. The opportunities are bountiful out here, and it has been that way all week long. We are really loving it. And Patrick Walters putting a limit in the boat in the first hour of fishing today. Not, not a huge limit, but boy, that is a great start to his day. He's got all day to improve on that. Michael Iaconelli just ounces behind. Ditto for Hunter Shryock. We have a great day starting again for the third day in a row here in South Carolina. Lake Murray is a great place to fish. Hey there anglers, I'm Fox Brothers Jane Minar and this is the Marathon Bassmaster Elite Forecast. We're looking at the weather on Lake Murray in Columbia, South Carolina for this weekend's tournament. Saturday, our pros can expect a mix of sun and clouds but with isolated storms in the afternoon. Temperatures top out in the upper 70s. A strong breeze could make casting lines difficult. Water temps are in the mid 60s which has been on the cool side for the hogs but they should still be biting. And on Sunday, we'll feature mixed sunshine with temperatures in the upper 70s. Drier but the humidity will also be much lower. Expect similar water temps and a stiff breeze. Good luck to everyone out there. Don't forget you can download the Fox Weather app or stream Fox Weather from your favorite connected TV device. Oh, yeah. Jane Minar knows Tommy Sanders. Hey, We've Jane. talked about it. Yeah, Jane and everyone yeah. at Fox Weather. It's a hard job this time of year. The, the yes. forecast keeps changing. We're going we're gonna to have big thunderstorms all day and then a few and then maybe just a little bit. It's, it's, it's a job. It's a job. Yeah, G Jane Minar's fantasy team, fantasy fishing team, not doing well. Brian New, the local angler, was on there, and he is not on the water today. So Jane Minar having a well, rough week, to say the least, she, fantasy fishing. She, and me as well in the same boat on that one, unfortunately. Patrick Walters, though, having a week and a day as well. Already a limit in the boat in the first hour of fishing today. The local from just down the road is leading this tournament at this point. Mike Iaconelli. Reborn Mike Iaconelli, rejuvenated Mike Iaconelli, ready to win another one. Add to his big list of wins with the Elite Series. 
major accomplishments, but now to another South Carolina angler from Wagner, South Carolina, over toward the, uh, the uh, Georgia border is Jason Williamson. Tommy, for as much as we've seen anglers jumping around and keeping a lot of spots, you know, honest, Jason Williamson has found, if there is a sweet spot on Lake Murray, he has found it. This place paid up big, big dividends on day one for him. I'm assuming it helped his 24 pound bag yesterday as well. Uh, it definitely did, Ronnie. And one of the things to really watch with Williamson, he's done a lot of work, not right there, a little bit of finesse fishing on that bass. But what's interesting is Williamson has caught a lot of fish on a big, zoom mag trick worm a really big profile worm that he says when these fish are not chasing the blueback herring on these really shallow points the old school way of catching them was a big jig we've seen it with our guy davy height throwing a mop jig back in the day guys like casey ashley said they don't eat that jig as much but that big profile worm has been a big player for jason williamson this week and a lot of these herring chasing fish that local knowledge. Some tournaments it plays, some it doesn't, but it's playing here for sure. South Carolina's right, Jason Williams and Patrick Walters. In there now, won't touch it. Weird. You mentioned earlier, Tommy, won a 2015 national championship in college on this lake this week oh, of, big, you know, eight years ago. So it was this I'm time of the year. If you... Oh my God, this is the bass. Ah, we got him. You good, Trey? <laughs> Better. Swap this one for the smallest one in his line. We'll upgrade that way. Should be about a pound call. Man, he was barely hooked. That's where I'm at. Oh, Rocco. Catch that one. You good? Had me worried on my boy take a tumble. <laughs> Dang, I got to start it on that point down there. Barely hooked, one hook, I don't like that. I think I'm reeling this one too fast, but that's what triggers them. They were right here under the boat, like so close. And when you can't see it, that is really shallow water. A lot of these fish setting up in one to three feet of water. One of those anglers that has done work in that shallow water, Jake Whitaker, who's really only concentrated on one spot days one and two, done a lot of his work early and earlier today. One fish for Jake Whitaker. A 
number one. It's not a start, not a bad, or not a big one, but it's a start. Let's get these con things ready to go. Yeah. Fall to 19th, that'll help him start his climb back up. <laughs> Those are our top four as it stands. Well, it's been pretty good one, so far, you know, we got a limit. It started much quicker. Might have been pretty good. That's a decent one if it's not a striper. Definitely biting. Not that big, but felt big. Boy, you could see a big difference today in the baits that Patrick Walters is throwing. A lot of spinning rod, a lot of finesse days one and two with really zero wind. And he said he will get Morning. aggressive today. A lot of moving baits, cranking, swim baits, spinner baits today. It is a different bite on Lake Murray on these shallow points. Fish. Got him all kind of hooked. This is actually the same jerk bait that I won fork on. I'll look real quick just to make sure. It's like almost a two pounder, probably, but I don't think. No, he looks smaller than that. We're just gonna go with it. In with a limit in the boat. Time is of the essence. This You're is a little shallow bar, shallow points, back to back. Sometimes just shad are spawning. Shad aren't spawning quite as good this morning, though. I've had shad like knocking my bait all the way back every day, and I'm seeing some today, but nothing like I have been. Brandon Cobb and Patrick Walters probably as much knowledge. You could throw Jason Williamson in that mix too of the shad spawn and the herring spawn on lakes like Murray and Hartwell this time of year. Lot of experience doing this and you see Brandon Cobb going on a flurry, not big ones, but they will find a flurry of a wolf pack of giants. We have definitely seen that on days one and two. place lake murray you can see it's a mature lake very built out uh, lots of houses yeah, lots a of nice house. <laughs> <laughs> patrick walters just saw him upgrade a moment ago hanging on to that lead there extending that lead as a matter of fact it's veteran mike Iconelli on a shryock kind of picking up where he left off yesterday brandon cobb as you mentioned mark zonick going through a numbers of fish hasn't run into the big ones as yet but he will you can just about count on that Williamson, Livesey, Fujita, Robertson, all the rest. We will be right back. Well, tomorrow on Fox, the kings of the lane lay it all on the line for a major yes. title. The names become legends and legends become champions. The PBA World Series of Bowling Finals tomorrow at noon Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Tommy, I know EJ Tackett from Indiana has been brilliant recently. 
looking at these finals. Anybody else stand out to you right now? Or always Kyle True. With him? Always Kyle True. Wow. Well, okay. I, think, I think he's made. Yeah, I think he's advanced to today or tomorrow, actually. But uh, I don't have a lot of time to spare, if you know what I mean, <laughs> to, to keep <laughs> up with him. Oh, you, knew, you knew that he moved on. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Tommy. Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray. This is day three of fishing. Crucial day. you got to make it into the top ten today. 50 anglers we are down to, and only 10 will advance to Championship Sunday. Quickly back out to Brandon Cobb. Yeah, and really looking at that map, a lot of your leaders very close to the main lake and very close to Drear Island State this Park creek, within the, a few a miles. Parts of the lake, if you're catching little ones like that, well, you just don't really catch little ones like that. But in some of these creeks, kind of mix up. Like, you might catch a five-pounder next cast. I go, I've been going down the lake trying to get some bigger fish later in the day. God, lost I got a two hit at that guy. Ike's climbed to second from 16th, Lee Livesey from 20th to 6th. Now, Jay Shakurit, who is 50th, last guy in, is in 10th place right now. Winner last year, also oh, rookie of the year last year. I can get him in here. I think it's like a two and a half, maybe. Going over your head, you're good. <laughs> He's not a giant if he comes off. It's not that unfortunate. <clears throat> Gonna drag him right up the falcon deck right here, like that right there. He'll get rid of one, not a big one, but. Well, it's amazing. The Bassmaster Classic a month ago, that bass would have meant so much. Oh, gosh, that game changer. <laughs> sure. It's He'll call virtually one. nothing here. Yeah. We're still eyeball calling. We're not getting too specific yet because they're uh, all the same size. Looks like that one. Nope, not that one. This one. Second biggest bass of the day, Scott Martin with a There's five a and a half about, pound. This a timing thing, though. Like, yeah, I'm not catching big ones here, but there was a boat just here, just here when I was over on the other side, and I waited for them to leave, then pulled up here, and he obviously didn't leave with them <laughs> biting like this, so they weren't biting when he was here. I'm guessing. Brandon Cobb, one of the guys we want to keep our eye on, lives just a little west and, and a little bit of north from Lake Murray as we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I'm over at the Dakota Lithium Screen and Knowledge to kind of break down how this body of water has changed. Lake Murray a few years ago, maybe 10, 20 years ago, it was really, it was a blueback herring lake, but they got introduced in the 80s. So they hadn't taken as hold of the body of water as we have seen today. Uh, when you look at the old Elite Series events we've had here, 2011, 2008, a lot of people were able to go up the big and little Saluda rivers to be able to get it done. But looking at the map yesterday afternoon before we cut the field down, this is 100 anglers on this map, but you can see where the, the damage has been done. The fact that only one or two people all week have really made any kind of successful patterns out of those two rivers says a lot about how this body of water has changed. Everyone being from basically Dreher Island State Park to the dam and really functioning uh, on those blueback herring fish. And when I say that, there's a lot of different points, a lot of different places. Lake Murray is a very big body of water the way it fishes with, even though it's 50,000 acres, there are so many points that have clay, hard spots, places that the blueback herring will come by. And so people are probably like, well, any of these points can work. Why aren't more people maybe catching them? There's certain areas where the groups of blueback herring, and this is a school of blueback herring and underwater am animation. When those blueback herring, which are very pelagic fish, they go up on a shallow point in the mornings, or maybe they're off the tip of a point in the afternoons. When they come by a point, whether it's wind based or, or just their time of day rotation, when they come across a school of fish, it can be lights out and you can catch your 25 pound limit that you're looking for in a hurry. And that is what some of the commotion we've seen on top water bites, on some of these jerk bait fish, on soft plastic jerk baits like that. And the past few days, we've seen a lot of anglers have to use a spinning rod, other approaches to slow down and catch these fish that are sitting on the point waiting, but they're not actively feeding. Today with the wind, we're seeing a lot more fish, we're seeing a lot of different baits, and it doesn't necessarily matter where you are on the lake, as long as you are around Dreher Island State Park to the dam, that is where a lot of those blueback herring eaters are gonna be. And they're really dominating over what we've seen in the rivers in past elite events here like 2011 and 2008.
Hey, thank you very much. Good stuff right there. Right down to the red clay. That's that's pretty authentic for this place. Hey, if that, you come to the Carolinas, you can't. Absolutely. I mean, the whole dam is working made of red in clay. Working in yes, the yard, whatever. Red clay is your life. John Cox. John Cox having a great year as he just about always does. I can only just called. Got our biggest bag of the day at 18 Got pounds. Her. God, she's a lot bigger than I thought she was. God, she's a big one. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, gosh. Oh, no, that's not what we wanted her to do. We didn't want her to go under the, that dock. Come on. Oh, God. Oh. Come on, come on, stay away from that dock. Come on, gotta chase you this way. Come on, come back this way. Come on, come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on, get away from that dock. Get away from them docks. Come on, come on, come on, we need you. Come on, come on, girl. Come on, God, she's barely hooked. Come here, come here. Got her. I got her. Yeah. yeah, look at that. Down its throat. Oh, man. Awesome. There we go. A lot bigger than I thought. We were thinking maybe it was a three. Look at that Gosh, she's fat. She's fat. I think she just came in. She was acting like she just came in. I don't think we'll put a floater on that one. All right. Let's check on that guy that was in there. Oh, that is awesome. Look how fat that sucker is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Go from thinking we're going to get a three to whatever that one is. I don't even know. Whew. Oh, that felt good. I, like I felt That felt really good. It worth it. Oh, it was. It was worth the wait. The dock was scary. I'm not going to lie. I was pretty scared about the dock. Whew. Oh, we just got to get four more. <laughs> four more of the right ones. Oh, man. Oh, oh that man. Oh, I'm shaking so good. Oh my gosh. I thought it was going to be the male when I set the hook and I was like, oh God. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. oh. I knew when I set the hook, I was like, oh my God. I just, I don't know why I fight it. I fight the spinning rod every time. I'm like, but that's just. That's just what I catch them on, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah just, just own it. <laughs> yeah. Four more, three more of those. John Cox, watch out. Absolutely, three more and an average one, and he's a, right up there. Uh, John Cox, always a threat to come from behind and win one of these things. Our own Davey Height, who has been fishing here since he was 11 years old. That's almost 25 years, Davey, and hats off to you. <laughs> what have you seen so far? I know you're out there with Koyo, Koyo Fujita, but uh, this is it playing out the way you expected to today on the lake? Yeah, yeah, Tommy, I've absolutely been fishing here for almost 25 years. I think you're exactly right there. But but it's it's so ironic. Let me set the stage. This area that, that I'm in watching Koya, it's called Bass Hotel. So that tells you all you need to know. There's lots of fish here. This is what the locals call this area, Bass Hotel. I saw Koya, after he had a, late, a little delayed start, come to Bass Hotel. So how do we not watch? And I know Z wants me to tell him everything Koya is doing because Koya won't tell him everything he's doing. But it's so interesting. You see all these anglers fishing spinner baits, crank baits, moving baits. They are so happy that the wind is actually blowing today. He came to Bass Hotel where the it is protected from the wind and is not fishing anything that I've ever seen anyone fish in Bass Hotel. He is using his forward-facing sonar, and he has like five of them on his boat and just fishing out in the abyss. It is just absolutely incredible to watch. Saw him catch that. He said a five pounder looked like a six, maybe a six and a half, but it's really interesting to watch him this morning. Davey, we talked about this tournament coming in here. If somebody could find that X factor, really this tournament, if you look at your leaders has been either sight fishing for largemouth or fishing for fish that are just solely focused on herring or shad. It, explain the bottom and what Fujita is looking for. 
compared to the rest of the leaders in this tournament because it looks like, and we said this yesterday, it looks like he has something totally to himself, which is so rare in an Elite Series tournament. See, it's, it's not just to himself with the other anglers, the 50 anglers that are fishing today. I've, you know, I've been on this lake, like Tommy said, for about 25 years, and it is amazing. He, I've never seen anyone come in this area and, and fish like he's fishing. He has his boat, his back to the boat docks, where you see a lot of the anglers fishing around the boat docks or on the points. And he is just literally just, just out in open water in a good general area but just just looking for fish roaming around by themselves something no one else is doing yeah everyone in this event probably uses forward-facing sonar to some extent but it's incredible the way he is doing that exclusively he's not paying attention to any of the visual type cover or structure that everyone else would we had heard that Koya Fujita is, is a huge Carolina Panthers fan. As we embark on the NFL draft, do you say he that the Panthers go Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud? Ah, Z, you always put me in a tough spot. I'm going to go Bryce Young, though. I mean, Bryce Young, I've, I've watched him. He's an SEC guy. Understand. There you go. Good Understand. answer. Good yes. answer from yes. our, our man Davey Height out there. And I, I can't wait to see who Davey is with next. Getting some good, valuable info, some intel on Kyoyo Fujita. Certainly one of the big uh, big players in this tournament. And set to be a big player in so many tournaments coming up in the future for yes. sure. Patrick Walters yeah, on top keeps adding to his lead right there. But still, he can't break away from the pack. It's everything so close. Everything so tight could be a... A wire to, uh, uh, down to the wire finish here tomorrow on Championship Sunday. Mike Iaconelli, Hunter Shryock, Brandon Cobb. We saw him catch a better one just a few minutes ago. Bryant Smith has now joined the fray all the way up into fifth place. More to come from Lake Murray. Hey guys, Jake Whitaker. We are here at Lake Murray for the third stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series. Been having really good days out on Lake Murray the past couple days, catching them on the top water and a big bite bait, silver minnow, jerk shad, having a good time, fishing them around, fishing fast, just having a good time, catching some fish that are schooling. Hopefully we can do it again for two more days. Jake Whitaker, the former national champion from UNC Charlotte. Made it out here in 2018. Out there having a good, good week here for sure. A little slow today, but he can get that going. Our Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray in the third day of competition. That means we got 50 anglers out there from our original 100 plus, and they're shooting for 10 spots tomorrow. Patrick Walters, the local, in the lead. And really looking at that leaderboard, a little bit surprising with Jake Whitaker, just for the simple fact days one and two, he had about 20 pounds by this time of the morning living off one spot and that mm -hmm. spot not firing so far good look at a underwater shot of a bass spawning right there good stuff lake murray Bassmaster master left ryan smith who uh, had 22 pounds yesterday is back at it he caught a four and three quarters the second one of the day he's got uh, 17 and a half pounds on the morning he's up to second place when we talked to rookie brian smith on the Bassmaster podcast he said the one lake on the elite schedule that looked most like california to him that he could figure yeah. out was lake murray so wow. he was excited to be like here heard that foul hook him. what we got here i think i hooked him cop. can't tell no idea i got two no i got two I got two. Oh That's boy. What it is. Yeah, it felt funny. One's a good one. I think. Don't pull off. One's a good one, one's a little one. Come yep. Here. Oh, this is going to be difficult. <laughs> that is good stuff. <laughs> there we go. How's that? <laughs> All right, we're gonna put him in there. And then I gotta call one, and I don't think he calls. This gets confusing. You gotta make sure you don't do the six fish thing when you, got, when you just caught two at once. He does call, so I gotta throw two back. 
It's a good problem to have. That gets confusing. Tommy, that's it? power pole replay of the day. Oh, I think you how you think? That absolutely is. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. That's, that's right. Yep. Two at once. Yep. C O double B. And we've had it before where it doesn't always end up positively at the side of the boat, but right. he he, scoot, he aimed and scooped the big one first and let it be what it'll be. Yeah, but both priorities were cold. all squared away when he yeah. got right. up. Fo <laughs> focusing on the good one is what you call that. Uh huh. Well, it has you, been an interesting morning. We heard that wind over Brandon Cobb's shoulder would get a lot more power fishermen in the mix. Not many spinning rods today. Throwing a jerkbait early today on a lot of these shallow points said he had to wait for another angler to leave this point so he could do work. And he has done that one cast, two fish, and one of them a good one. In fact, his biggest one of the day. Brandon Cobb is the power pole replay of the day. <laughs> look, look at that map. Oh Notice again, Ronnie, you nailed it. Focusing on the big one. <laughs> that is good, good stuff. What a morning on FS1. He's another one of those anglers, just like John Cox, that will act like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just yeah. I'm just doing this or that. And he is yeah. one of the best <laughs> mm -hmm. shortlist anglers for this lake, for this yeah, style so, of fishing. Uh, I've caught, I don't know, 15, 20 in a row here. And I've noticed on a lot of these places, when there's that many fish, you don't catch a good one until you kind of weed them out. On some of these, these are like more creek-oriented places than main lake, and they kind of stack up like this. And I uh, was about to leave, John drifting across it. And then I took myself, I think that's a good one. It, it was, it was like a four and a half maybe, maybe a five. And then uh, also had a two and a half on the front hook. So I caught both of them at the same time. Pretty good little upgrade there, doubles. So probably about to catch another one here in a second once I get back up here. They, uh, I actually usually catch more doubles and hadn't caught that many this week, but that was a good double there, that was a big one. Probably hooked the little one and the big one got it. That's the problem. The bigger ones are much harder than the little ones to get to bite until they get aggressive. The little one probably made the big one eat it. The cob came out here in 2018, promptly won. Especially these shallow bars events. still. I'm gonna spend my morning in the creeks. They're, uh, the fish are definitely 100% not as big in the creeks. But they are uh, a little bit easier to catch. It's a good start, kind of getting the day flowing right. If you get out there, I'm gonna go fish the main lake stuff, a little more herring oriented fish, not shad later. But the problem is if it's not going well out there, I mean, kind of get spun out. If you don't have something, you get, get a little worried. I, I don't have much now, but I've been leaving this creek with like 15 to 17 every day. And I think I'm at about 15, 16 right now. So that's the goal, get as much as possible out of here and then go out to the main lake. Brandon Cobb really understands this herring spawn deal. And I've been catching one thing a lot that of fish top water on the main lake, but this creek has just got a little stained water and they don't seem to want to come up on top quite as, quite as well as they do in the clear on the main lake. Ronnie and Tommy, you'll find this interesting. He said that the herring spawn really, it, it's happening a little bit but he would put it at about a three out of a 10. He said it will be wide open in about three weeks. He said it's just kind of starting right now. If you don't win in the creeks, I don't think. Could be wrong, but kind of hard to catch those five to seven pounders up in here that this lake's got so many of. That might have been old mom that was keeping them all around. Not catching any now. Cobb's fish went in as a 4.8 and a 2.8, about a three pound upgrade with that double. Mm. That, that's efficiency right there. And for those at home, we do the culling process. You catch five fish, you throw one back when you catch one that's bigger and upgrades for you. You never are supposed to fish with six in the live well. So in his situation, he already had five, you catch two. So you have seven <laughs> fish. He made sure he threw two different fish back before he resumed before he fishing. So you don't have a penalty, again. yeah. yeah.
Definitely a different look to things today. The first two days, absolute chamber of commerce, high skies, warm temps, no clouds. We got clouds, we got wind today. They managed to push through it the first two days and they're pushing through the changes today as well. TH Marine Weather Watch, a high of 77 today, which is about 10 to 15 degrees cooler than it has been, a low of 47, down in the 40s tonight. That may make some changes for Sunday. Afternoon thunderstorms can be found around here today. We don't know how prolific they will be tomorrow. High of 77, sunny, high skies again, wind about 5 to 10, so cooler weather. Yeah, really the biggest difference in that weather watch is we're going to have a, like you said, Tommy, a cool night. And how will that affect the largemouth spawning on this lake? Absolutely. Keep an eye on that. A lot more fishing to be done, and we'll have it for you when we come back. Tomorrow, the NASCAR Cup Series returns to Fox as the series heads to Talladega, where high speeds and pack racing always make you hold your breath. Catch all the action. Pre-race kicking things off at 2 Eastern. Then the engines fire for the Geico 500 at 3 Eastern. You can catch it all on Fox. Tommy, give me somebody. Come on now. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what. I think this thing is set up to fall into the lap of one Chase Elliott, provided he outraces wow. everyone else. <laughs> How about as long that? as he's got the oh most gas yeah. and yeah. the most As long as he finishes and first, and yes. I think he's got 100%. a shot. Yeah. We won't be too far from Talladega in our fifth stop of the season at Lay Lake down That's the right. That's River. Right. Just down the road. Third day action here. We got 50 anglers out there gunning for 10 spots in tomorrow's final. Let's get it back out to the guy who's got the hottest hand on this day. That, for, that is for sure with Patrick Walters. You need to tell Davey Height that tip right there, Tommy, about when we put him on the spot, he could say, well, I think if the Panthers select Bryce Young, he will go number one. I think yeah, that's, that's the way he needs that's to the phrase way you frame it. So these he things. Can get it's all in the framing. <laughs> we don't trap him. Yeah. I kind of agree with Davey on that. I really do. Oh, I know there too. was. Here we go. Third one. Smoked it. Something was telling me to change the nut to that square bill for a minute. Well, you get a good look exactly how shallow these fish are on the, some of these close to main lake points. We'll get to that side in a minute. Great blue, man. I definitely think it's yellow. Cool, don't. We just gotta keep freaking catching him. Oh my goodness, Sir Brighton, we gotta find big ones. Uh, you know, we're catching them, but I'm not happy yet. Like, that sounds crazy, but it's like, they're biting somewhere else better. Um, and we need to be somewhere else. I don't know where, but, uh, man, finally got a bite on this sucker. Oh, dude, if they're going to bite this thing today or bite like this, oh, dude, we got so much stuff to run. I fished this last two days. This was some of the stuff we fished yesterday when I was like, I'm just sampling this stuff, you know, and they didn't fire on it. But if we can get them to fire on this crap, fat bag, fat bag. Slow down, Patrick. Mm -hmm. mm. Getting fired up. Tommy, we've seen that with anglers who know a lot about Lake Murray is the, the tendency to run around a bunch. Brian knew on day one covered 128 there. miles yeah, and only had 14 pounds to show Shoot. for it. And you can get yourself caught up. That's why he's like, hey, slow. I need to slow down. I want to run everywhere, but that's not the best idea sometimes. Let's get back to Drew Benton's much slower start today for Drew. He has been starting out with a couple of good ones just about every day, but today is a different story yes, so far. Yeah, stay like that. <laughs> And he is an angler, not concentrating on that herring pass. spawn. Did for about 10 minutes earlier today, and that was it. Getting back to the largemouth locked on beds. Blind and I Just a little one, though.
long and skinny. Let's put him in as two and a quarter. Let's go. Tommy, you have guys like Brandon Cobb who are like, you could go through 20, 30 fish on the spot and maybe catch a big one or maybe finally get that opportunity. Or somebody like Drew Benton may set the hook a whole lot less today, uh, but he's getting to pick yeah. and choose which ones he does. Right. And sometimes that's a six pounder like yesterday and the last the last two two days. And important to remember, he's one of the best in the business at doing that, just that. So if he, uh, he is able to find them, he is gonna prosper, that is for sure. A great turn, yeah, 23 really plus on each day. Tommy, if you kind of look at what Drew Benton's done right there, he'll start on that shad spawn or, and, or the herring spawn early, but he does not do it very long, unlike guys like Patrick Walters, Jake Whitaker, and uh, Brandon Cobb. He'll do it for about 30 minutes, and then this has been where the bulk of his weight has come all week long. Large mouth that are spawning big, big males mixed in with at least one or two big females every day, and Drew Benton going to need a little bit of sunlight to see him a little bit better from there. We're going to get back on the water right now, Brandon Cobb. Oh, that's a fish. I thought it was a rock. Is it a big one? Oh, he might call. I thought it was a rock. I don't know if he's gonna call. He's gonna be right there, about the same size. I had the jerk bait. I would call another one. There was one under him. Get in the boat. Not sure. Uh, questionable. Questionable. Definitely seeing an underspin play today with a couple anglers. Didn't see that earlier this week. Buoy. Balance beam. Well, Brandon Cobb, it didn't take long for him to establish himself out here on the Bassmaster Elite mm -hmm. Series. He almost always has a terrific season. Always a player in this progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year race. The points for consistency throughout the season. But there's the way it stacks up right now. The winner of our first stop, Lake Okeechobee down in South Florida, Tyler Rivette on top with the, with that lead ahead of, yeah, you know who, Brandon Cobb, Carl Jockinson having a good tournament here as well. Uh, first couple of days for sure. And Kyle Welcher and Greg Hackney, the former Progressive Angler of the Year champion. That's what's rounding out our top five there. So a good tight race yet again for that very prestigious award. Some say equal to the World Championship, the Bassmaster Classic. Well, that's unless you win the Bassmaster Classic. Yeah, and then and that's way more of an award, pretty much. Value. Understandably. Really <laughs> taking a look at that leaderboard right there. A lot of veterans, mm -hmm. some new guys kind of in the mix, and that has shifted a lot during this event at Promise. Here next week on FS1, it will shift in a big way on Santee Cooper. And looking at that top 10 for your progressive angler of the year, there's not any really like smallmouth specialists as we would call them, which was it was where we end the season every year. If we have any of those rise up over the yes. three largemouth yes. events, they could maybe have a better yeah. shot. But you just go on a roll sometimes. A guy like Greg Hackney's caught him up there plenty and he's fifth. Yeah. Wanting to leave, but then I caught that five, four and a half, five pounder. And they're getting a little bit bigger. Might have weeded through enough of the small ones. A lot, a lot of times you think, like, oh, I should save some of these for tomorrow, but to be honest, I might not ever get on this spot tomorrow. Or 
never know. If I don't catch more weight, might not make the cut, but we gotta keep grinding them out and see. And, and these fish, there's so many up there. There'll be new ones tomorrow. A lot of these fish are just coming off bed, so all these places are reloading about hourly. I think it's new fish every day. Really kind of listen to Brandon Cobb and Patrick Walters. They both kind of let the cat out of the bag, at least in this tournament right now. A lot of those creek fish, not as big as the fish that get on the points on the main lake, but really good filler fish. He caught a four and a half pounder, obviously helped the cause a little bit ago, but it's that late day bite out on the main lake, fish setting up on herring, which seems to be a lot of the bigger ones, not as numerous, but the quality has been closer to the main lake. See if we can catch us two at a time again. Put on a show for the third day running here. Third day of action at the Marathon Bassmaster Elite on Lake Murray. Third stop of the year for the best in the business in the Bassmaster Elite Series. Patrick Walters still hanging on to that lead on top. But Bryant Smith from California moving up tight into second place. Behind him, Brandon Cobb and Mike Iaconelli tied at this point for third place. Hunter Shryock, Jason Williamson, Austin Felix now joins the top ten. We've got a lot of movement going on. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. So great to have you with us here on Bassmaster Live. What a great tournament we have going on. And thanks to all the fans who made our recently completed World Championship Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. Presented by Toyota, such a crashing success. All the records that were set back in 2019 here at the Classic were re rewritten, broken here. Fans, 4.5 million fans we reached with this one. The, the crowds uh, on site, Mark Zona, broke the records again. Even at, even at takeoff, thousands of people there. And we're going to be headed to Tulsa. Another great town coming up. Exactly right. First Canadian to ever win a Bassmaster Classic, Jeff Gustafson. And there was a big party after Championship Sunday yes. on Fox a couple weeks ago. And as you look at the lines that we have seen in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the one thing that's fair to say, there is one thing I can guarantee, Tommy. Yeah. We got to see Smallmouth win the tournament in Knoxville. That will not be the case. No. On Grand Lake of the Cherokees. But it's good fishing there. The Neosho River coming from the north, the elk from the east, and it's a, just a great, great spot to contest for the best in the world. You just know rivers. I told you, I, I said it yesterday. Rivers. You just I'm, know I'm a, where every lake is populated from. You are impressive. I'm a rat at any rate. <laughs> Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray. Big, oh, big yeah. day here. 50 anglers gunning for 10 spots in tomorrow's final. They have been catching them so good this week, Z. You know, really, the one adroitness that I, I you can't you can't ignore this, Tommy. Jake Whitaker, very consistent, sitting on one bass, and your leader coming into the day, Drew Benton, just under five pounds right now. So we said that the wind and the rain would hurt some anglers and help some anglers. Well, two of your leaders definitely not helping so far. Benton has fallen out of our top 10. Ike has jumped in there, Lee Livesey, and now Joseph Webster with a five pounder and a four pounder. He's up to almost 18 pounds on the day from 42nd place to eighth. My goodness. We always talk about this, but with the weights being as good as they've been this week, took over 17 pounds a day to make the cut. That is a, that is unbelievable for a largemouth fishery. Oh yeah. With the weights being so good and being so tight, the ability for someone to gain a bunch of classic points today will be the deal. If someone's in the 40s to 50th place, they could really make a jump into the top 20 and gain 20 points away. Lee Livis, he was only 20th, but he keeps culling. He's in sixth place right now. He's almost 17 pounds. Yep. He wants to get in that top 10. 
Wow, we have gone 90 seconds without a fish catch. I know, right it's, it's like I'm starting to feel like I need oxygen or something. <laughs> Day one Z, I was watching the bass track that gives the minute by minute. Five minutes was the longest stretch with no fish catches. That is amazing, it, it really is. And you know, the, the cool thing really listening to David Wharton, who won a tournament here with a very close friend, not with us anymore. Big weights, you know, on this lake back in the, I'm going to believe that was kind of in the early 90s. Yeah. There was a lot of grass in this lake, and, it and like then right it, it took a downturn. It took a really bad downturn in the 2000s. It was really the last it's time we were here. Now. Boy, it looks so good in here. There's beds everywhere. It's scary how many three to five pounders in this lake now compared to a decade ago. I think it's more I think it's a timing thing. Like these beds are so fresh, I feel like they're gonna just slide right back up on it. Cause I think that first big one we got, I'm pretty sure it was just a fresh one that just came in. I mean, it feels good, uh, but anything can happen on here. I'm trying to avoid the fry garters, but boy, part of me wants to just co catch a couple of them fry garters just to put some more fish in. But I mean, realistically, if we if we find a bed with a male and a female, that'd be like a three and like a four, and those would be two we need. So we really only need now is two more active beds, male and females, and uh, yeah, we'll be good for the day, you know. So just um, so really trolling for one or for t two stops, you know. Uh, so this wasn't uh, this was pretty terrible in practice. Uh, there, I thought I saw like a couple fry garters and uh, just wasn't really, uh, you know, it just wasn't looking that great. But I just I just had a feeling in here, you know, I had grass and shad and. It just looks really fishy, you know. I mean, it looks like you'll catch a big one. And uh, I slid in here the other day, and and uh, right at the end of the day, I was like, ah, let me just go look at it. And uh, man, it it was like it was so alive in here. Um, you know, there was just there was fish everywhere, and they were on every one of these beds and stuff. So yeah. Let's go from John Cox, looking for fish on beds, out to Jake Whitaker, who has certainly leaned on one spot throughout the course of this tournament, watching the birds on the on the dock uh, a little ways away. He said the birds, yes, when the birds yes. would leave, the fish were going to turn on, and said that, that is absolutely, yeah, absolutely right. That is amazing. Got him at the really said he protected this I spot the majority of the afternoon. There's that dock. Days exactly. one and two. Junker, just not. That's all right. They're still here. They just will make us wait on them to start getting in there feeding. Where'd you catch that one up? Uh, I got that one on the fluke. I can get him undone here. Not a big one, just a healthy fish. <sighs> Basically, Tommy, just a little, just a little rock vein coming off of that point. If we can't get us another one. About two to four feet of water. He said there was dozens of three to four pounders there the first two days of competition. You nailed it. He said he would stare at the seagulls, and when those seagulls would sit on that dock and then take flight, it would explode. So seagulls kind of gave the gave the school away every time they would take flight the first two days of competition with Whitaker. And unlike a lot of your herring and shad spawn fishermen, he has lived on this spot both days of competition. Not doing a lot of running around and really kind of protected it 
where other anglers couldn't get on it. Keep looking for some gulls flying here. Saw one a second ago. Did you? That's a big saltwater tactic. I've been on a boat, they actually hooked a seagull, actually dove and grabbed the lure and got hooked. It, had to reel it in. And you, you know what? One, one thing that was really cool that Whitaker said that he got to see the first two days was he would watch the schools actually corral and push the herring up onto that point uh. where they would work like like whales they would work as a team uh, on the schools of herring and shad on that point Now these herring Z, they are a saltwater species adapted to freshwater, right? Is that? I, yeah, really one of the best baits for, that's why stripers, you know, love them so much. But the, what's what's cool about this lake is a lot of those stripers, and we've only seen a couple in this tournament, they're generally off a little bit deeper, more five, this time of year at least, five to 10 foot of water, even deeper than that. And, and what it's made a largemouth act like we talked about it the first day of this tournament mm -hmm. really what it's made a large mouth act like is a large mouth doesn't act on other lakes they turn into a little bit more of a lazy striper they go up they spawn very quickly on this lake and then they roll and they live the rest of their summer waiting chasing feeding on those blueback herring and it has made a different dynamic and it has taken a largemouth bass and made him at least a little bit more active than we see him on other lakes. Yeah, they, they get a little stronger, I think, chasing those herring around. They certainly pull on this lake, that's for sure. Patrick Walters hanging in there on top of our leaderboard, enjoying a little less than a two pound lead. Bryant Smith, second place. Brandon Cobb, Mike Iaconelli, Hunter Shryock, Lee Livesey of Texas, Jason Williamson, Joseph Webster, the Alabama angler joining the top 10, Austin Felix and Steve Kennedy, another Alabama in there as well. Oh, the NASCAR Cup Series returns to Fox as the series heads to Talladega. With the high speeds and the pack racing always make you hold your breath. Catch all the action with the pre-race kicking things off at 2 Eastern and the engines fire for the Geico 500 at 3 Eastern and you can catch it all on Fox. Z, who you got in this race? Uh, all day long, Talladega, I'm going Kyle Busch, Tommy. Kyle Busch, good pick, solid, solid pick. Right there. Appreciate that. Aggressive, yeah. it's an aggressive track, Tommy. Yeah, that's right, it's the fast, the fast place. No doubt about it. Boy, the fishing has been fast and furious at the Marathon Bassmaster Elite here at Lake Murray. This is day number three of four days of fishing. Today, you gotta be in the top 10 at the end of it all to get a shot. One of those vaunted blue trophies that signify an Elite Series championship. We got some worthy, worthy possibilities out there today. Patrick Walters on top of our unofficial, unofficial leaderboard. Bryant Smith, got Brandon it. Cobb, Mike Iaconelli, yes, Hunter sir. Shryock, and the rest. How about our BMC on point, Z? Oh, yeah. Yeah, why don't we do that? Taking a look at our VMC on point, Koya Fujita has been throwing a lot of finesse baits, fishing deeper, kind of rogue roamers just yes. off of the main lake. VMC on point, Late Koya stuff. Fujita rookie, Bassmaster Elite Series. Only one in his live well, but if you're going to have one bass in your live well, that is the one to have. Had some mechanical issues early, lost about what Ronnie said, maybe a half hour to an hour of fishing, but if you really looked at his, wow, he's actually showing us a couple baits right there. I uh -huh. believe that's a jackal drift crab, throwing a jackal drift minnow. He's throwing something else that we don't quite know what it is that he's doing a lot of his damage on. He hasn't been as generous to show us what that bait is, but uh, taking a look at a jackal drift minnow right there, definitely a lot of baits that we're not seeing a lot of other anglers throwing 
in this tournament. BMC on point, Koya Fujita. He had a magic hour and a half yesterday afternoon on mm -hmm. me. That's what's so interesting is we started the show talking about how the morning had been critical for him, but how yesterday afternoon was the, the key moments for him. And so it's day to day, it changes. If you miss out on that morning, it's not the end of your day. You have a chance to make it up some point in the day later. And what's funny about Fujita day one, a lot of his work was done by noon yesterday. It was really done from one till about two o'clock. The only difference today is a lot of cloud cover. I think in the first two days of this tournament, we did see one cloud pass in about 16 hours of fishing. It's like I'm having yeah. to like feed it to him. It's the craziest thing ever. And you find one in the right mood, Had to feed it to him. Two and a half. That's fish number four for Drew Benton. behind his schedule so far. Yeah, and one of the things you're kind of noticing with Drew Benton. one over here I'm going to catch on the way out. A lot of the males on this lake are really, really big. Three to four one. pounders is, not seeing that today. They're not a, they're not, I had to feed it to him. They're not. Shrine cooked up. Keeper back. Berkeley Maxent Creature Hog down her freaking throat. I'm talking gone. <laughs> I can't get it out. Yes. Not as big as what I thought. She's skinny, but dang. I can skip a jig. Skinny. <laughs> Woo! We're doing a hot mess again. Let's go. Come on. Dang, dude. How about that? Out off the end, too. Like, I just got to keep fishing. Ain't got bit out there the whole time, either. It's gonna happen. We just gotta make it happen. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What is that? Four? As it says right there, four? he is our new leader. Okay. Yeah. By just, just a four few fish? ounces with just four fish. How about that? Only two people in our top ten right now do not have a limit, and that would be first and second coming into today. Having a great week here, maybe looking at his oh, yeah. possibly his best finish ever in a Bassmaster Elite Series event. It has been a super, super week, and he's happy to share the joy with everyone here. He is in his element. It would be awesome to win this week, and honestly, I haven't really thought about it a whole lot. It's it's such a hour to hour deal out here, um, but at the same time, like it wouldn't surprise me if we did do it this week, just because of this place that we're fishing at. Um, you could literally feel like you're down and out, 
and within 30 minutes, uh, you know, have the bag that you need to win. Please. And we're all capable of it. So I think anybody that does win this is going to come down right to the wire. Um, but I feel like I have just as good of a chance as anybody else just because, you know, we're, they're all swimming around everybody. <laughs> Uh, really good right off the bat. We caught a five and a half pounder, and I said anything before nine o'clock was a bonus, and it truly was. Uh, it was a slow grind. I think I caught my second fish around nine o'clock, and it was just like one here, one there. And I, I really pushed the envelope on some things, but was able to get some bites doing some different stuff, so that really helped my confidence that I can still fish and do my things around the areas that I feel like the biggest bass are swimming right now. And, uh, you know, hopefully tomorrow with the conditions changing, it's either going to be really good for me or really bad. But uh, we all have to deal with it, and uh, it should make things interesting. See some great catches from yesterday from Hunter Schrock, including that one he uh, managed to finagle out from under the dock there. That was pretty deft piece of work. Yeah, and really just a lot of things going right for Hunter Schrock. Fishing a lot of docks, doing some sight fishing, a lot of top water, more kind of a shad spawn deal for Hunter Schrock. And the section of the lake that he's in, we talked about it yesterday on Bassmaster Live, it is getting massive amounts of pressure but not in the same way Shryock has been fishing in this tournament. Really good dude on the Bassmaster Elite Series, having a great, great tournament here on Murray. He had the unfortunate that nature of being the first one out of the, bottom. the Classic yeah. this year. He would like yeah. to make it back. He's 26th right now. And stops. Year. Stuck in a crevice or something. Oh! My guy Canelli called with a four pounder. He's Got up to 19 time, pounds on the day. Stay hooked up. Uh, it's not hooked good. Not hooked good at all. Get tired, get tired, get tired. some of that that's a big one one hook Woo. She, I don't know if she's as big as the first one Yeah, boy. <clears throat> Postpone. But she's already fed back up. Only three mm -hmm. fish so far for Brock Mosley, but two of them are really, really good ones, and that affords him a trip back into the top ten where he started his day to day. But Hunter Shryock on the strength of that big one with only four keepers in his live well has taken over the lead by ounces ahead of Patrick Walters. Bryant Smith, Mike Iaconelli just caught a four pounder, Such informs us, so he's hanging in there very, very tight. Score so closely bunched there at the top, and of course you gotta be in that top 10 if you wanna fish on. We have more action from Lake Murray on the way. Yeah! No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Day three action continues here from one of the oldest man-made lakes in America as far as large size lakes. In fact, when it was completed back in 1930, it was the biggest man-made lake in the world, Lake Murray, and now it's one of the best tournament lakes in the world as evidenced by what we have seen over three and 
the better part of a, well, a half day to add it onto that here on day number three. The top 10, as you see right there, Hunter Shryock looking for his first Bassmaster Elite Series win, the Ohio native who lives in Tennessee now. Patrick Walters, South Carolina native with so much, so much uh, local knowledge. Bryant Smith, California, Michael Iaconelli and Brandon Cobb. And look at Joseph Webster there in ninth place, moving all the way all the way from 42nd place into ninth place mm, today. Wow. That is just incredible. Just barely making the cut. And that is going to be, Z, I think, our Mercury move of the day. Absolutely. You talked about going on a flurry here and colliding with one of those wolf packs. Well, we got to see that with definitely with Joseph Webster today. Big, big move. Kind of down in the standings, almost near the cut. 42nd place all the way up to ninth right now, starting it off at 840 still room to grow he's going to need to make a few calls if he's going to hang around for championship Sunday but your mercury move today from Alabama Joseph Webster and Ronnie you told us that he does have a, 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 yeah. a Herring Lake connection in his home state right? yeah, he lives not far from Smith Lake and and right around the Bassmaster Classic time got a top 10 on that body of water and so fishing herring lakes even though those are spotted bass primarily it's just still knowing how herring lakes operate at times back out to patrick walters in second place oh yeah he's not huge but he's good he's better Thank you, boy. Little post pony. God, he got the thing good. Here I go. Got a good mouth on him. Got a good mouth on him. Good foundation. Who's bigger? Purple's bigger. Sheep. Calm down. And if he wasn't a bit already, I'd be gone. So I want to take a second. Green's bigger. Well, here we go. Man started the day with the lead, Drew Benton. Not as big as I thought he was. But we got him. I still ain't got nothing I want to weigh yet. But until we call out that little one, we're going to stop on every thing that I think's over two. Come on, we'll replace it. Oh, how about a skeeter boat's big fish alert? How about it? Bernie Schultz, six pounds, Ooh. 10 ounces. Cool. Mm. Second biggest of the day. Nice. You like that, don't you, Suge? You know it. It was 44. I know you do. Does, does for him. Interesting dynamic with Drew Benton. Drew Benton not wanting these conditions with clouds and wind and kind of said this was going to be what he thought the toughest day of the event for him. And right before Drew Benton, you see Patrick Walters, who said this is exactly the conditions he wanted for the main lake herring spawn so 
Int interesting to see where those two end up today. Yeah. Drew's got some work to do. Yeah. Bernie's got a 6'10 and a 5'1. He's jumped from 44th to 17th with four fish. Don't know why, but it happens. Yep. Cop might get a fish dropped on him here, but look out. Yeah. They do. Yeah, but that one. This it should be a good one. Uh, he's not that big. Try and get him out before he pulls fish with him. Don't think so. so. This is why I need to weigh him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because see, if, I, if I'd weighed him, I would be able to just weigh it real quick and see, you know? That one's bigger for sure. Not that one. Don't think he's gonna do anything. Golly, see? He's smaller. He's smaller. But I do need to weigh him. It's the first time he's bit it. He went much smaller, but I think he was a little bit smaller. You see what I'm talking about? He ain't a three pounder, but he does have a black spot on his back. Big at him. Tip. I thought it was sores, but it's that discoloration that some of them have on black spots. But it gets rid of that little bitty bitty one. Huh? Big bite fighting frog. Uh two and a half. I know they weren't big, but they're, they're fish catches. <laughs> they weren't big, but they're fish catches. <laughs> Drew Benton forging yeah. on. Look for something big to show up on a bed would be the ideal situation for him because he could catch him. But it hasn't happened yet. Got a limit though in the boat and he's slowly culling his way out of the top 10, but back in it now. Hunter Shryock, still the man on top just ahead, just a few ounces ahead of Patrick Walters. Bryant Smith, Mike Iaconelli and Brandon Cobb rounding out our top five. Plenty of stuff going on. Man, so many stories working on this day three of action on Lake Murray. We'll be back with more of it. Tomorrow on Fox, the kings of the lane lay everything on the line for a major title. When names become legends and legends become champions, the PBA World Series of Bowling Finals tomorrow, noon Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. And you think uh, this EJ Tackett guy, huh? See? I do. It's where your reality becomes a loom. It's, it's exactly what it's I was thinking. <laughs> exactly. Yes, I am all about EJ Tackett this week. He's just on a roll. He's seeing it. He's believing it, Tommy. Yep. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I think so. Illusion. It becomes reality. <laughs> John Cox. John Cox, like Drew Benton, searching for some big ones. Finding these out of the wind corners here, of which there are plenty on this lake. There are yes. such a twisty, turny shoreline they have here with a million different pockets and little creeks and drains and such. You know, and back in the day before the blueback herring, this is how this tournament probably would be dominated and guys running up river looking for dirtier water. It is not as much the case anymore these days. Oh, come here. Come here. There we go. That's a keeper. Man, that fire line, I drug him straight across that thing. <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah, I mean, this might make it a little easier when we get moving, and I don't have to really throw it much. 
Maybe we can get this other one right here. Oh, Brock. Limit filler. Dude, he had that thing hooked good. Hey. If past years and it's results. It's not good at Lake Murray when you got to put one on the board. Kind of tell the future. Brock Mosley was one that we should have put on our fantasy teams for. The, the events in April, he has a fantastic track record in mm -hmm. this month of fishing. As we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge, wanted to talk about fantasy real quick and a couple factors that could affect going forward the points and how they're distributed. The big bag and the big bass are always how you get a couple extra points for your team. And right now, Matt Robertson's day one weight of 25.8 is still the biggest limit that we have seen come across the scales. We had a couple 24 pound bags yesterday. The possibility of 25 or more uh, today or tomorrow it looms large. The fishing is still doing very well at Lake Murray. Meanwhile, the 614 Big Bass has been shared by one of uh, these two guys, Matt Robertson and Brandon Card, both with 614s over the first two days of the event. But today, like Such said, seven pounder for Matt Airy, 610 for Bernie Schultz. Either one of those could maybe take over the Big Bass of the tournament so far. And then there are some other notable numbers I wanted to tell that kind of paint the picture of how good Lake Murray is fishing right now. The number of 20 pound bags after just two days of competition we had 16 each day, 32 total. That's only five short of the most we've had this season. Lake Okeechobee had 37, and that was through four days. We have 32 through two days. So the, uh, the ability to have the most 20-pound bags this season looms large. 96% limits. I mean, if you didn't bring in five this week, you were way, way behind schedule. And then our cut wake. This is the most telling story. Yes, we've had events with higher overall weights. You know, we had 46 and change leading this event. We've had over 55 leading an event earlier this year like Lake Okeechobee, but the cut weight, it took 28 or 29 pounds to make the top 50 at Okeechobee and Lake Seminole, two great bodies of water. This 34-3, it rivals numbers like Santee Cooper in 2022 and Lake Fork in 2022, places that we saw it go over 100 pounds. So to see 34-3, 17 pounds a day just to get paid this week and, and fish on day three, what a fantastic fishery through the field, not only at the top, but also all the way down to 50th, 70th place we saw, 15 pounds a day. That'll get you a long career on the elites this week. It's getting you sent home early. More guys getting their line stretched this yeah, week. Yeah, 100%. Any other place we've been 100%. all year. That's good. Good stuff. Thank you, Ronnie. Excellent. Let's get back out. Jason Williamson. Yeah, and really looking at those numbers, Ronnie, this is what's amazing. It's, this lake has been throttled the last 30 days. You know, from local pressure, it's that time of year where obviously biting really good. It's it's definitely received pressure. A lot of live golfers were here. Oh, sorry. No, what? Not, not talking. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Very similar. Sorry. Very, yeah, similar very, very similar there. there. You can watch them on. Better one than he probably thought it was. There's the Lake Murray bass. Finally, geez. That helps the calls a bunch. I believe that will get rid of a one pounder, probably. Three pound upgrade. Yeah, nice three pound call for Jason Williams. That'll move him from ninth place probably into the top five or close to it. Very good one. One will call, I believe. He's, he's a little bit bigger than one of them. He's got a whole face full. I'm going to flip him. Ugh. I don't know. He'll be close. I don't know if he will. I thought he's bigger than that.
Thought he was bigger. But luckily now we have them weighed so we can find out. He's 277. I have one that's 277, one's 279. That really, really didn't help us know anything, did it? <laughs> oh my gosh. Go here. No, you, you can go here. All right, just in case. Oh, I didn't look to see which one was. Let's balance beam real quick. I was hoping it'd be obvious. Tommy, we're getting word unofficially. We can maybe confirm that later, but as Brandon Cobb is culling, we did not see Jason Williamson necessarily make a call. We didn't see Hunter Schrock yesterday either, but he was just getting away from the rocks. Uh -huh. Jason Williamson may have made a fishing motion, which is a next cast. And oh, if you have make okay. a cast with you six fish in the line, well, yeah. you it'll be a two pound done. penalty, which negates that call that he basically did. So mm. that'll hurt in a tight weight event. Yeah, that's, that's not Absolutely not will hurt. Yeah, not, not good, good at all. Not good. We'll see how that works out. Jason Williamson as it stands right now, currently in seventh place, hanging in there. We started the day in the top 10. Brandon Cobb right ahead of him right there. Brandon Cobb who treated us to, I think I first, double on camera, two at once uh, for the year of 23, a little bit earlier. So lots and lots of fireworks today and plenty more on tap for the rest of this very, very important day on the Bassmaster Elite Series Lake Murray Tournament. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Minn Kota, Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, Progressive Insurance, and by Rapalon. 50 Elite Series anglers in the thick of it here. Amid great fishing here at the Marathon Bassmaster Elite, third stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series at Magnificent Lake Murray. Definitely one of the hottest lakes in the world right now for tournament fishing. And the Ohio native living in Tennessee right now, Hunter Schryock, in search of his first Elite Series victory, is on top by ounces ahead of Patrick Walters, the likes of Brian Smith and Mike Iaconelli, big names on that leaderboard. And plenty more action left to come on this day, but let's take a moment and have a look at what we have seen so far with our Yamaha Midday Report, Z. Yeah, why don't we do that, Tommy? Taking a look at your leader coming into semifinal Saturday, doing all, pretty much all of his work, eye spying, a lot of sight fishing for largemouth, and like typical sight fishing events that we have covered throughout the years on the Bassmaster Elite Series. After the first two days, Seems like it gets tough to keep up that consistency. Well, Drew Benton right now currently oh, sitting yeah. in fifth place, just under 11 pounds. Had a tough morning yesterday and then big shots late in the day. Gonna need to see that again. This Bassmaster Elite Series angler. I thought it was sore. Falling down the leaderboard a little bit. Yeah, fifth place now, and 23 on the first, each of the first two days. Over to Brandon Cobb, certainly one of the favorites coming in here. Hanging in there right below Drew Benton. Yeah, definitely not a lack of bites starting off in the creeks on these really shallow clay points. Made the comment, look at one right there on an underspin. Going to get a look at that more tonight. Taking a look at Brandon Cobb's morning, not a lack of bites. The one thing he said is, felt a lot of the creek fish were smaller. Well, caught this double with a big one up in the creeks. And the one thing about Brandon Cobb, though, on the Elite Series, when he smells a victory, usually holds the trophy. He was able to cull both of those in that oh, double right there. It was quite extraordinary. I looked on another one, there was one under him. Very dangerous character. All, every time we tee it up in the state of South Carolina and most other places as well. Ditto for this man right here, Patrick, Patrick Walters. Yeah, taking a look at Patrick Walters saying today was going to be really the most favorable conditions throughout this tournament. He said that wind should really help out that herring bite, a little bit of a shad spawn bite, and 
Got to see Patrick Walters do a little bit of work with a spin and rod today, but said he's going to mix in a lot of big baits. And throughout this tournament, a lot of those shallow play oh points God. definitely oh fire in the afternoon. Looking at guys like Brandon Cobb, Patrick Walters ah. in the mix <laughs> going into Championship <laughs> Sunday here on FS1. Just ounces behind our leader, Hunter Shryock. Here we go. Third one. And speaking of which, one of the men who is the one of the men who has been a big part of the story here is Hunter Shryock. Yeah, we have not seen a lot of fish from Shryock this morning, but definitely quality oh, a... has been in his bag and a lot of fortunate things going for Hunter Shryock, mixing up a little bit of boat dock fishing, a little bit of sight fishing, backing it up with top waters and making the comment he felt later today could be the biggest bites for Hunter Shryock looking yeah. for his first victory in the Bassmaster Elite Series. Hunter Shryock with some good performances uh, throughout his career in the state of South Carolina. Been out here for several years, Bassmaster Elite Series. And Berkeley upgraded Maxson, most years. Hall, down or front. Did miss the classic last year and determined not to let that happen again this year. Let's get back out on the water live with Drew Benton. Not very big. Get rid of that number one. Drew Benton going through some fish here, just trying to wait him out and hopefully find a big one on the bed. Maybe, maybe one of those elusive big females here on Lake Murray. Well, that's about all of our coverage today on FS1. Uh, so great having you with us here today. Coverage continuing on Bassmaster.com, also on the Fox Digital platforms and Tubi. A live mix also is coming up later today in the weigh-in at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Bassmaster.com. That's when those festivities uh, start to begin there. They check in. The first uh, flight checks in at that time in the weigh-in shortly after that. Don't forget, coming up next right here, this NASCAR Cup Series qualifying from Talladega. And we will see you right here at 8 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. It's always been like this, or if it's the blue back heron. Talking about Davy Hyatt, he did say the blue heron has a lot to play with, and it's, the, the lake itself is probably in the best state it's been in a very long time. I wish they would uh, dump some in a few of the dumps at my house. <laughs> you know, that's always the fear. That's why they made it a, a, a federal law not to do that. Yeah. So, and we, you know, we don't need a uh, lot of exotics. work our way down here, there. You know. Really that one appeared to uh -oh, be a real good spot sun. yesterday, a little bit farther sun down. Out. I'm gonna have to at least check. Yeah, where's Not that far where's the there. storm at? Which I mean, is there supposed to be a storm? I mean, the dam is only it. like nine miles. Away. Trust me, Benton's won't so that sun right now. I know it's that far, you know. It's kind of Catching some fish still. It's not uh, not any real big ones. I got got a little more than I thought I had. I went ahead and weighed my fish, so if I get on a point where they're biting quick, I can cull faster. And I got more like, I don't know, I think my scale say like 1690. Probably, probably 16 and a half to 17. We well, just had some three to but three and a half pounders. Catching a few off. Oh, some of these points I'm hitting now are a little bit bigger fish points. Right. They're down here in this little clear water. And uh, there's more herring up actually than chat, I think, out here. A few herring. Still not catching any real, real big ones. That's the only way I can catch We haven't hit a timing right the there because they were schooling in here pretty good yesterday. And I haven't hit a. I haven't pulled up on anywhere yeah, that came up real good yet. I've seen two or three, but yeah, nothing crazy.
to catch them on top. I've been catching some bigger ones on top, but they don't really seem to want to come all the way up today. I'm doing better on the jerk bait and the swim bait. So well, I'm, I'm that's sitting enough there and of that he's one. We got to move again. About, right. He's talking about having 17 pounds. Yeah. Take a little short Which run, see if we can get 18. on the next spot. But I'm watching Patrick Cole. Oh yeah, and and he's there, if not better. Uh, I'm not getting the worms the, out today. Patrick's Yesterday I'd worm some. Patrick's points. famous for being light. We ain't doing it. Oh, We're not yeah. getting 20 on a worm. Yeah, about so. five pounds. Well, I mean, he, he actually <laughs> says he's got 15, 16 pounds. Of uh, he's got 18 for fish. sure. So, yeah. I mean. Look like. I don't look. I fished in practice. So, right? Cobb, you said something right interesting. Corner, uh, he said you have it. He's going to run to the next point if he can get on it. You know, there was a lot. I mean, as many paces, as many points that was, that was going down, our guys found the better points really quick. And and it was hard to get on a spot um, and get going, but uh, sit down, fish hook, and come back, and go to the next punt, fish hook, and go to the. Newest, uh, justifiably and and sincerely confused and scared this morning. Really? You know, because yeah, I mean, he's like you know he was expected to to do well here and and uh, felt really bad that he didn't. I mean, you know, for those who had him on the fantasy teams and that kind of thing. But really, at the same time, it's just like you know the fine line that you guys play of. Uh, taking a right turn or a left turn or, or staying put real I quick. Mean, you know, it can it can d define everything. And, and uh, you know, Zero Swindle and, and uh, Gary Klaus both defined it as that one fish that is, you know, that basically tells you everything. Yep. That either it comes or it doesn't. And, and maybe it would have come to you if you wouldn't have gotten, you know, impatient. If you'd have stayed patient, maybe it would have come to you. Yeah, no, I, I didn't get that fish this week. <laughs> yeah. But you know what he's talking about. I know exactly you know, what he's you know, talking about. Everything. Okay, I get this now. I'm understanding. But I feel like, Clint, when I talked to you, you had a bunch of those in practice. Yeah, I, I felt, I mean, I dialed in, and I think that hurts you sometimes as well. Being overconfident or just saying? I mean, I, because here's the thing that I noticed. As an observer, someone who goes out here with y'all, the guys who... And and having fished with a lot of you guys, you know, we go fishing. I know how the regular Joe goes fishing. I know how you guys go fishing, and 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 the guys who seem to be successful are the guys who are willing to lay it out there and say, "This is how it's going to be," or "This is ain't happening." Oh, you got to change. Boom. I mean, you know, I made I made that I tried to make that adjustment right? five times in the last two days. But I mean, there, that, that's such a fine line. But on the other side of that, there's guys that stick with like the deal. John Cox. They won't change, won't change one bit, and they'll end up catching them before the day's up. Yeah, just like John Cox. I mean, he's not going to he's not going to waver. Uh, Drew Benton's a lot like that. Yep. And then this uh, Koya, uh, Koya Fajita. Uh, Window calls him fajita, <laughs> but I mean he's fantastic. Holy but I mean he's a, he's not going on those points. He's kind of in the stuff. Yeah, and yeah, he's I'm just kind of sweeping and and scoping. I mean he he makes fewer casts than any any angler in the elite series it's ever. A, it's a different type of sight fishing. It is 100 percent. Hands on his hips and 
and just kind of moving Thank around. And, I mean, it, it interesting to watch. Ah, uh, not great. I got a small limit. We got plenty of time. Not great. I got a small limit, Brock. What does he have? You got two five pounders. <laughs> small limit. Small limit. It's reading 15, 15 four, but I can tell you that. He does not have a, uh, you know, 112 in the line bro. Stone old plopper buzz bait. Let's see if this one comes back. I missed that bite. Oh, and I love doing what he's doing. This Cox just found one on bed. Or did he get bit? We watched John speaking. Of I that marked this one the other day. Fishing. On, on but I come and fish, look for it the first day. And I'm sure that was a big, big one. If this is the same yeah, one. Oh my God, it's, it's so many. It's but ridiculous. It's, five, it's six plus. Was that Cox? He said he came back. You would never Drew, Drew's the one that, that we're listening to. I was pointing to look at my baby. I don't know if it's bad I mean, or what that was. What it's insane. doing. No, it's Patrick talking out there. You need to have these guys raise their hand. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bass right there, look. I mean, uh, how many it is? They're not. Are you, are you they're going back head? and forth down this bank, what they're doing. I don't know if it's up there or not. He is, though. So I'm trying to catch him. That's a pretty solid fish. They're all sight fishing. They're all sight fishing. Just in different ways. Mm -hmm. Just in different ways, that's right. Why would they not just eat this? Dude, that was insane. I can't get over how many fish that was. Like it was the He's acting like you don't play it. Yeah, how would they not one just not run into it? Well, they move out of the way. <laughs> They've been caught so many times. I did catch a lot of fish in practice and tournament that had hook holes in their mouth already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've been getting hammered. Let's see if we can ask Walters what's going, what what he's looking at. Tell us, explain to us what what he's seeing. I think he's fishing the sides of points, just going down them and kind of fishing what's in front of him and then scoping as he's going. That's what I think he's doing. But I've seen him uh, fish the side of stuff, oh, not yeah. necessarily it, it just is, the tip. It is definitely the side. But he just mentioned something about it being insane. I want his cameraman to. Yep. Should be able to hear us to ask him. Tell us what's um, insane about what. I'm fishing okay right now. You know, I mean, we caught some fish this morning. You know, we started off pretty strong. It slowed down a little bit. I think just that bite slowed a little bit. Um, we, we've got us five good base fish. It's not going to be enough. We're going to have to cull a bunch more times. But uh, we're around a ton of fish. And uh, we just, I've been wanting to get down lake. I'm up lake right now. Um, I just mainly want to get down lake to where those bigger fish <laughs> live and so that's why i'm in a hurry to get down there but at the same time i'm in a hurry to fish for these because it's there's so many fish right here right now and if we could just trigger out and figure out how to get these fish to bite i think we could catch a really big bag and not have to go down there and burn those fish so that's what we're trying to do is figure out how to catch them right now up and then we're about to work our way down here soon yeah unbelievable like I can't, I did not believe there'd be this many fish here. Like an absurd amount. Get a band like, I don't know how I'm not snagging them. There's so many. I'd like to see that. <clears throat> and what he's, and when he's saying that, he's not saying there's 10 to 15. There's probably a hundred laying up there. And more. not moving. And not moving and, and not eating. And it's, it's very, very aggravating. I have to just catch them on that Carolina. So you're talking about the lessons. These are big dots too. 
Lessons These aren't little ones. Oh, he's on my plug right now. People talking about forward facing sonar and maybe the unfairness. But it's almost like so. There's ten times there fish here than I could imagine there being. Seeing and they're bad fish I mean. they can imagine. Timing being everything. Certainly. And now is he fixing to waste a lot of time because he's expecting <laughs> more fish than he ever imagined to to because he keep, he's already said I want to go down lake where the big fish are but you know you. The old adage, you don't leave fish that are biting, but they're not biting. It's about right. painful. <clears throat> but yeah. now you know that they're there. You can mess you yes, up. You oh, yeah. He's he's probably going to throw everything he's got on the deck at him before he gets out of there. He needs to have one of those little. I don't think I've ever seen Patrick drag something. <laughs> Seven o'clock, we're leaving. Unless we catch a big in like 11 minutes. How's Jake doing today? Whitaker, Whitaker, Whitaker. He, you know, he, he was not on the same point. He was Cobb's pick to, or Cobb picked him to win this week. Really? Yeah. Oh, I missed it. I'm gonna have to get with it. Did I just pass him? You got me in the top ten. Sure. He boiled on it. What's going on there? Gosh, that was a hit. I don't see him. Karate chop? Mm -hmm. Yep. You got yep. I got like five on this thing right now. That's weird. Oh, we're here. Mm -hmm. We got two. Got two. Like two, two pounds. Uh, have yeah. a good day. I mean, he could be in a bad rotation. Well. Points. You know, he's been able to do that. Perfect size too, man. Every day, so far, he's been about as consistent as anybody there. But he was sitting on a point. This may be a, a, the same point. He just changed time, but it's been the mo the windiest spot on the lake, and it's it's not as windy as it was earlier. Tell me, it looks like a jerk bait. Probably a jerk bait. I thought it was a fluke. Oh, it could be a fluke too. How much? I mean, I'm just telling you, back in the day, when it got to be April, May, the jerk bait was put away. Yeah. But that ain't the case anymore. Not the way you can work them on forward face sonar. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jerk bait, 365 days a year. I mean, Replace if somebody spinner. asked me what was, if you could only take one bait, it would be that. Really? I mean, you, you're around, you can catch them on it. Yeah. It's interesting. As opposed to a jig. Yeah. Okay. I'd probably say chatterbait. Opposed to a chatterbait, I would throw a chatterbait <laughs> if I had to pick one bait. I think the chatterbait is kind of, maybe not, but I feel like the chatterbait, they're finally getting. Finally? You finally, think? Finally, after 20 years, know. I think they're finally getting <laughs> keyed in on it. I think that what's happened with the chatterbait or the lady jig is just that everybody's making them. That's right. And they're not all made equal. No, they're not. And uh, 
knowing how to pick a good chatterbait has not really been part of the process. Anything with a blade and a jig head. A jig head is almost as important as that blade is. Oh, yeah. Not that I know anything about it, just that I like fishing it. <laughs> but Jake is, uh, Jake's going to have to pick it up. Yeah, no doubt. He's going, I mean, you can't have one pound. <laughs> One to three was really special as well. It seemed like really like there was that was the other window. Lee called out every fish he had in his box the last hour. Wow. One to three, the magic hours. Yeah, I know. I know Cobb. I don't know what he's done today, but the last two days he would hear and fish in the morning, sight fish till about one o'clock, and then he'd go back to hair and fish until weigh him. No. Wow. Well, this oh, yeah, sun yeah. wasn't like supposed to be here, so there's going to be some folks that are, that are happy right and, now. That, and that are disappointed. Yeah. Set a rubber band back. That's what I was saying. I, I couldn't that really tell how big he was. Cloudy. He bites quick. I'll catch him. Help a few ounces anyway if he bites really easily. I, I fished for one yesterday I thought was a three pounder, and it was four, four of four. four that yeah, I like I suck at judging them. I already know. So. And he's already back. I'm just still sitting way too close. Jamming. Keep easing back a little bit. I don't know how they're that educated, you know? Well, they won't stay up and eat. Yesterday I thought I was fishing for a 404. So I probably should catch him just in case. He looks pretty dumb. This is, I'm good at bed fishing, but I don't do it because I can't tell how big they are. And then like, I end up fishing for one, like God, he didn't even call. And then I don't fish for one and come back and catch him next time. I'm like, oh, that was a four pounder. Kind of like my Lake Fork five pounder. You, you remember? Let's go right over here. Kind of like my Lake Fork five pounder. That's a prime example. Yeah. Yeah. He's so deep, like, I just can't tell how big he is. Yeah. Oh, I'm honk. Oh, God. He's anywhere from two and a half to three and three quarters. <laughs> He's somewhere in that general range. I'm a little close, but he looks like he'll bite from here, so. Heck with it. Let's try to catch him. I can't, like he's deeper than I think he is. That's why he might be bigger. Cause I can't even hardly get my worm to land in the bed. Yeah. Oh. He just did the nibbly. I mean, cause if he's a three and a quarter even, a three and a quarter is kind of hard to call. So that's like a decent one. So do you hopped over? How do you choose your bait in this situation? Something you can oh. see or something? He's a nibbler. Smells. Ah. You want to get that? He is a nibbler. 
I mean, you go ahead, Caleb, because I don't like <laughs> fish. I, I, I let it. Um, if it depends on how if the fish wants to look down or not, um, depending on what I'll do first. But um, God, he keeps like I'll just switch turning his side anything, up and taking off, and I think he has it, and I can pull like it out he's the just bed. Snipping. And and I really have to pay attention to the bait being gone. I'll I'll, sw I'll put on something white, but uh, nine times out of ten, it's something green just to get him. They they seem to bite that a little bit better. Really? Mm hmm Something green. Green pumpkin. Okay. Yeah. Because they think it's a brim or a crawfish. Yeah. So why don't you like to sight fish? It's burnt me too many times. So oh, it'll I, burn you I quick. promise to never do it again. It looks like You're I probably this week should have sight fished. Yeah, I'm afraid that you should have. So, but but I mean, it, I admire that there's a lot of folks that don't. I mean, just it is hard, and you can suck up a lot of time mm -hmm. on one fish. Obviously, I, I guess you can because I watch y'all do it. You know, but. That's, you know, this morning, Mark, said, now i got to make an adjustment on that and, and, and got a little That's got to be, what, 58? It could be, man. Could be. I'll The guys down the list and what they got to do that we saw that uh, Jake Whitaker still that thing's moved they're just done with it right but then you also got Joseph Webster Who's at 53 dude, pounds? He's got a 19 pound strength. He's got to catch a that, four or five pounder. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that's harder. To, that's a, that, that all of a sudden makes it a lot harder. Even though he's in the top 10 now, there's an opportunity for him to get bumped out and him not, you know, have have a good shot because we still. And you were talking about Fujita. Uh, he's caught. And you know, and he's he's got a lot of got a lot of stuff to give there to get back in to that. Oh, well, here he comes. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's a three pounds. three pound, three and a half pounder. Right? It's like a five pounder with him holding it. Yeah. Little skinny guy. But now he's Thank you.
Bing, whisper in the cameraman's ear and see if he can zoom in on a couple of those baits. You're getting his boat this afternoon while he's up here weighing in. Oh, yeah, I'm not doing that. I mean, I tucked away probably. <laughs> We're justified with the camera, but I'm not going to sneak in a man's boat. I mean, I'd ask. So, it's boat, amazing boat. the stuff that you know they they bring over. Talk to all, all of them. It's yeah. It's a different world of fishing over there. That can't work over what here. What is that? I don't know. It's Japanese bait dog. Ja Japanese magic. Maybe super glue. Ah, uh, I bet that's super glue. I want to see if it's, you know, see if some of the stuff. Some, I mean, it's, it's just some of it's so cool. Even the little magic. Uh, see, there's the little crab thing. It's hard to see there. And then the, there's the flute thing. <laughs> and then look how small the, on, on the far, far left there. Interesting. You know? Crab. It's not, I'm calling it a crab thing. <laughs> you know more about crabs than I do. <laughs> I'm just saying. It looks like a little crab. <laughs> I don't even, and, I, and we don't know what he's throwing. Because he, he's pretty, pretty stealthy, pretty ninja-esque ninja when it comes to some of that. But he just doesn't throw, he just doesn't make cast to fill the bottom. You know, is that a hard bottom, soft bottom? How deep is that? You know, those kind of casts he does not make. Just, you know, I think he would get confused by a spinnerbait. <laughs> I don't know. Is he just out in the middle of a bay? He's just out in the middle of the, yeah, and, but, but. You see the, the, the buoy there, right? Yeah, so it is a shoal right there. Okay. Right. So he's off the end of he's gotta okay. be probably off the end of a point and he's seeing something and he's and he's throwing to it. But I mean he he doesn't throw at a bunch of other stuff. Jackal drift fry and a jackal drift crab. Drift crab. So yeah, it is a crab. Okay. I know one thing that uh, Davey Height and Dave Mercer are up next. Oh, so maybe they can explain all this stuff to us that you know we can listen to it while we're having a hamburger or cheeseburger or a double cheeseburger. A double cheeseburger. So <laughs> I'm good. But, with that. I mean, I'm good with that because I'm 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 more when I see a guy like Koya. Uh, I get more confused because that's not the way it was when I grew up. <laughs> no, I mean, it's bad enough I, that we got forward-facing stuff. But I'm like, oh, we got I find it interesting. Just um, I'm intrigued by the new ways that just show up to catch bass every time, you know. And that's what keeps us doing it. You got to stay interested. You have to stay learning. And you have to stay driven to keep trying to learn, you know. Is that what it is? That's what, you, that's what it is every dang day, bud. <sighs> you take a lesson from the butt kickings and you – Keep you cherish, on you, rolling. You keep on rolling. That's right. All right. So what did you learn? Because you got <laughs> you got a butt kicking. I I wish I had a week to stay at this lake and go fish these herring fish. But and that's not a lesson. What it, did you learn? Did you not put in enough time on the before? I, so my number one mistake this week was <laughs> my number one mistake this week was uh, filter my practice on one creek and I didn't look around enough of the lake. Uh -huh. So I learned that lesson the hard way. Clint. I'm still not sure. <laughs> you didn't learn nothing. I'm still not sure. Oh, man. This is why y'all are on live mix on Saturday. That's right. Because you didn't learn anything. So, anyway. But what we have learned is that we're getting ready to go off, and we're going to have a little bit of Dave Mercer and Davey Height when we come back. Hope you'll stay with live mix. I love my partners. We're going to go have us a hamburger and uh, talk about lessons in life. And I got some of that. <laughs> Back with you live mix soon. One of the most amazing things about this classic is the fishing freaks that showed up here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Look at that crowd. It is for the fans. <laughs> Blast off, there's all the media, the fans, family, you're in that moment. A new all-time attendance record for the Bassmaster Classic this week at Knoxville.
Nashville, Tennessee. I think everybody that shows up to the Classic wants to feel a little bit of what we are feeling. When they open that door and pull you into that Coliseum, the adrenaline rush of that, it's insane. All the records set here in Knoxville in 2019 have been reset here again. Six pounds, 13 ounces! Gussie gets it done! And oh, Canada, you have a Bassmaster Classic Champion! Let him eat it. That was a giant. Look at the swirl. Oh my gosh. My heart's racing. Dude, it was a it was a five pounder freaking coming to eat it. Intense. Intense. Look at, oh, look at that little balloon coming back. Hurt my knot. Put a little juicy juice on there. There's a big one too. We got three spots in here that's got good ones on it. sink it down to them. That does work sometimes, but they these fish do not want it sinking down to them at all. Mm. Where'd that big group go? They're all over it. I can't get over them near there. Tricky, tricky suckers. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Humminbird. Mercury Nitro Boats and by Bass Pro Shops Welcome to Lake Murray Country, sunny South Carolina and for the first time this week Sun's hiding behind some clouds here and there, but a beautiful day in Columbia, South Carolina, and it is my second favorite day of the week. Semi-final Saturday, only topped by Championship Sunday. And if you look right there, we're trying to whittle our 50 anglers competing out in the water right now down to our top 10. And currently, that's your unofficial top 10 atop the leaderboard. We've had 
two new Elite Series champions this season. Well, if Hunter Shryock can hold on, we would make that three in a row. Hunter Shryock, um, a three-time classic qualifier. But, man, he is really just... When you see an event where things that aren't supposed to happen start happening, you got to start to think that maybe it's his time. But let's catch you up on all of our top ten with our Toyota Midday Report. And I'm joined by... Bass Fishing Hall of Famer, Classic Champion, Angler of the Year, Davey Height. And we're going to kick it off with our day two leader, Drew Benton. Yeah, Dave, Drew Benton came into this tournament doing what he likes to do, and it's worked out for him. He was leading when they left the dock this morning, but it seems to be dwindling away just a little bit for him. I'll be honest with you, I'm, I've been very surprised he's been able to make it happen this long. And, hey, I I wouldn't bet against he that got another day in him if he can stay close Uh to the top of the leaderboard, but the sight fishing, uh, this isn't the perfect day for it, but he's done a good job adjusting and, and only has fallen back to second place so far. And now all of a sudden the, si the sun just came out a little bit more. So that'll be good for Drew Benton. I'm sure he's hoping for more sunshine and less wind. Drew Benton uh, literally has to be considered one of the best sight anglers on the planet right now. Anywhere we go that a sight fishing bites in question, Drew Benton is always in the mix. But this guy, a pre-tournament favorite, the C-O-double-B, Brandon Cobb. Yeah, Brandon Cobb has a lot of experience here on this lake. Surprising to me, I talked to him some yesterday. He hasn't fished here a lot in the last year or two, but he fished here a lot when he was growing up with his dad. Uh, the area that he's spending so much time in here this week, or a lot of his time, uh, he fished with in that big arm of the lake with his dad for many many years when he was young so a lot of experience and that's how you can do things like that catch two at a time a five pounder and a two and a half pounder on the same cast brandon cobb had to call two and all of a sudden he had seven fish in a boat i'm glad he was mindful of that and he did call two so brandon cobb a lot of history here a lot of history uh, on lakes with blue back hair and in them like hartwell where we saw him win a bassmaster elite series tournament but brandon cobb uh he'll be around tomorrow no, so will this guy. You got to believe Patrick Walters. Somerville, South Carolina's Patrick Walters. Yeah, awful glad to see Patrick Walters making the top 10 going into Saturday. And uh, just like Brandon Cobb, I expect to see him around on Sunday, too. These two have a lot of experience uh, on these lakes. And, and man, when, when Patrick Walters can fish his moving baits and get around and using his forward facing sonar a lot, he's always a threat. And he's certainly been that uh, every day so far. And. and He's got a couple places with bigger fish on that he hasn't been able to get to bite as well. But today he did. He caught his limit real early this morning. He's been culling up all day long. So Patrick Walters, no surprise seeing him in third place currently. A two-time century belt holder. And let's go off to a former motocross racer, Hunter Shryock, three-time classic qualifier. So Hunter's kind of going against the grain. He's not really just chasing the heron. Uh, spawning heron a little bit of shad spawn around where he's at but he's he's found one stretch of the lake i don't want to go into it too much right now because he is the leader and you know has another half a day today and and then all day tomorrow for for hunter but he's just found a good area and he's he's been mixing it up crankbaits top water a little wacky rig around some of these boat docks you see here he, what he's doing but just doing a good job fishing everything in front of him, and he's found a very, very good section of the lake for him. The quality of fish that he's been able to catch has been super impressive. And as I said off the top, I mean, been doing things that shouldn't happen. You know, yesterday we watched him. That fish, he should have lost it three times. He said yeah. that on stage. He couldn't believe uh, how he stick handled it out from under the dock. But uh, things are happening good for Hunter Shryock. Not just on the water. He announced this week that they are expecting a baby. So the Bassmaster baby pattern maybe holding true Davy height. Yeah, absolutely. It uh, would be great to see him get his first elite series victory. What a nice guy. Everybody likes him. And he's a good fisherman. He's, he's due to hold a blue trophy over his head. These conditions have changed just a little bit today. Everybody was talking about how the wind is going to help them. Has it helped so far today? Well, I think it has. You know, you have to realize a lot of these anglers are fishing the same areas over and over again, these points, and they do get a lot of pressure. And I think had it stayed just just no clouds in the sky and, and, and no wind, it might have gotten a little tougher today. So it's been just as good today as it has the previous two days, even with all this pressure. So, yeah, I think it's helped. It's been an unbelievable tournament since the start. Our biggest 50-cut weight of the season. And you look where we've been, Okeechobee and Seminole. 
It's pretty amazing to say we're right here and we've had our biggest cutway, but it's always amazing when you get to watch this guy. One of my favorite people to watch, uncontrollable childlike happiness of John Cox. And he's looking at one. He's baby. definitely looking at one, no doubt about it. It's uh, no su no surprise. We need this one, baby. To see John Cox not on the points like 90% of the field is. He's doing his own thing like he always yeah, does. He loves to sight fish. Oh, no. Oh, no. Come on. Come back. The way he's fighting this system. Oh, yeah. Got to be a good one. That's exactly what I was thinking. It's got to be. Boy, she thinks he thinks it's so much bigger. Oh, come on, come on, baby, stay on there, stay on there. Give me my hand in your mouth. Ah, I got her. You guys, barely getting it. Oh my gosh, that's what we needed there. It's about the size of the one we lost in that tree, but it's all right. I'm feeling good about this, just moving stuff. All right, I think uh, we probably won't have to call him. I don't think. All right, let's get rid of our dinks, right? Yeah, that's five. That's five. Let's get rid of those dinks, man. God, it felt good. Oh, maybe it's a turning point. So, you know, it, it was going downhill there for a little bit. Um, but I'm feeling, like, you know, it's crazy. You get one bite or run into one fish and it just changes everything. I so badly wanted to just take off, start running. I don't, I just don't feel like that's the thing to do anymore because. It's so fun to watch John Cox fish. He <laughs> just is. enjoys what he's doing. And you know, you fish tournaments, I fish tournaments and does everyone enjoy fishing tournaments? I think pretty much so, but you put so much pressure on oh, yourself. Man, it's, it's not, oftentimes you're not having fun, but he's always having fun. Patrick Walters is always having fun. Look how big this one is. Now, I'll be honest, it's fun to watch John Cox launch a boat. <laughs> he's just that kind of person. You want to be around him. He's not bigger than purple. Mm -mm. I don't think that fish is going to help. Nope. There's one stud in that group. Not even quite noon and throwing back three pounders. That's sure <laughs> enough. <laughs> it's a great stud. fishery and it's definitely showing I'm everyone what up, a great bro. fishery it is here this don't week. Come up. Pretty hard. Generally, by this point in the tournament, you see a lot of anglers with four to five rods on their deck. You know, they've narrowed it down to just a few approaches. That is not what we're seeing this week. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Uh, if you've never fished Lake Murray and never fished during the, the shed and blueback hair and spawn, the combination of two happening here, you need a lot of different so. baits to throw at these fish. It takes a <laughs> lot of tricks. I hope so, because I got him. If I hadn't got him, no, we want to delete that footage. There's one. I don't think he's big. I can't tell. Nah, he's not that big. I mean, how many fish has Cobb caught today? It, it feels like every time I look up, he's yeah. catching a fish. Yeah, but only Here, being able to weigh in five to fish to people that that aren't watching Bassmaster Live just don't realize how many fish are being caught. I don't come off saw Lee Livesey okay. yesterday at about 8.45. He said he'd caught 30 fish already. Yeah, they said 60 to 70 by the time it was done. Jeez. And Brandon Cobb's probably Yosemite. called 30. You're right. Sometimes two at once. He's got a whole face full. Yeah. Nope. It's really 
amazing to me when I, I was listening, I couldn't see, but Brandon catching the that five and the two and a half pounder on Saturday. It's gonna be it's exactly what happened nothing. to me the last time we were here. I had a five and a two and a half on, and I lost the five beside the boat. It cost me the tournament. So when he said I got two on, I'm like, oh, please don't lose the big one. And he didn't. He did a great job. Now we'll look at our day one leader, Matt Robertson. One time. I don't know. I see Lake is uh, heating up, Davey Height. Yeah. It's bigger than what I got in a while. Yeah, it looked lot. like about five or six schooling around one. the one that he's got hooked. Stay down. Stay down. Just swim. Just swim. Just swim. Just swim. All right, buddy. It's a little butter one. Now that ate it like it's supposed to, baby. Choked it, my man. Giant, that's better than what we got. Oh, that's a lot times. better than one pound, four ounce. It's the smallest fish. The amazing thing about all the fish catches here, I mean, I believe he just caught that on a Berkeley cane walker. But the amazing thing is how many topwater eats we've seen. You know, oh, yeah. when, you, when you see these weights and how high the cup was, the more amazing thing is just how much top water action. Yeah. This, you know, the the saying it's I'd rather catch one on top water than you know two or three and on a worm or something like that. But if you're a tournament fisherman, you really don't shouldn't have that mentality. But it's definitely fun to catch them on top water. It's like that's what Patrick is doing now. Maybe a jerk bait. Wow. I doubt it. God, he ate that. Oh, we're definitely not keeping him. He has tongue hooked. need to look at that. Hey, a bit of jerk back down. That's a good sign. Oh, you're set up right there. I actually caught him on this point. It's that really amazing, like you mentioned, how many fish Patrick has caught today and Brandon. But it gets to a point where you th you've got to start thinking, how can I catch a bigger one? Because it's always fun to catch fish, but you know, you've got to have some five and six pounders the way they've, you know, this lake has showed out this week. You can't catch threes, three and a halves. Oh, he's hooked in the head. That's why. Okay. Dang. Hmm. Can you, it's top if you remove it through there. the sight bite from it, can you manage fish on this fishery in the way that, like, the timing's so important, and you might, you know what I'm saying? Like, is there any sense in laying off? Um, most places that, that these fish are at are pretty obvious places. Yeah. There are places that I would call sneaky places, and, and you could try to manage those. There are no secret places on Lake Murray anymore, I don't think, but you could manage the sneaky places. But those those shallow points with buoy markers on them, I think you better catch them while you can because someone else will if you don't. Oh, sure. wow. Oh, boy, Hunter again. Get your crap together, Hunter. Just watch that camera. Oh, boy. Oh, my gosh. 
Come on, Lord. Watch your camera, bro. I'm serious. Because I'm going to put it behind my head. Oh, gosh, come on. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Come on, fish. It's bigger than what I think it is. Be done. Got her out there in open water. Just take your time, but I'm serious. Watch the camera. Come on. Sorry, dude. No, you're good. You know, we we bros, bro. We we bros. I'm just saying, when it's close like that. We bros, bro. <laughs> That's why I'm like, watch the camera. Everybody's your bro uh, when you're catching five pounders. <laughs> we got spot lock on, anchor mode. We ain't fishing, Ronnie, we ain't fishing. We're just keeping our stuff from dang, running amok. Put us back in the game, boys, let's go. Let's go. Look at that fat fish. Hey, that might have been Terry. Terry the bush troll. That was, I bet you that was the one that was there. All right, we gotta figure out what we gotta do. I'm gonna, you wanna jump here? You stand on the seat. They're good seats. This is this is how I do it. I mean, she only had it for like yes, exactly. This is what we do at home, folks. You you barricade it. We don't want no jumping out, no funny business, no funny business. We got a dang bag again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just kidding. <laughs> Be like a club tournament. Just start weighing them. I think that cannot be close to that. That one. Dude, if we had that one, we're going to have our chance. This has got to be smaller. This is oh, definitely he's got some bigger. to do, but yeah, I can't get enough of this. That's got to be the one. What a Double fish catch! I mean, time. Look how pretty that we're is. watching all these guys chase the blue back, and and Hunter Shrack is just like, I mean, he he's could wade fishing. along that shoreline yeah. just in a set of wading boots and accomplish what he's done this week, fishing the way he likes to fish. And man, that is something that every bass angler around the world loves to do, and that's catch giant fish like Hunter Shrack is doing. Five fish potentially away from his first Bassmaster Elite Series title. Hunter Shraya continues to have an incredible tournament after just being the first angler out of the Bassmaster Classic yeah. last year. Comes into this season with a little more motivation. And look at right there. 63 pounds, 8 ounces in your lead. Your day two leader, Drew Benton, right behind him. But I don't know. I mean, I'm... I don't know if we're allowed to bet on this sport. It's not the NFL or anything, but I, if I was a betting man, I'd say they're not going to stop biting, Davey. What do you think? No, I don't think they're going to stop biting. But for the first time, someone's kind of pulling away from the field. I, I don't want to get suspended, but I, I'd bet on it. Yeah! Let's order! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Welcome back to Lake Murray country. Lake Murray, the host of our third stop of 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series, the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray in beautiful Columbia, South Carolina. 104 anglers started this event and now only 50 remain. And let's have a look at today's weather, your TH Marine Weather Watch. And today, 77 degrees with a low of 47. Possible thunderstorms, wind, West Southwest 10 to 15 all week long. The anglers have talked about wanting more wind. So we'll see how that works out. Championship Sunday temperature is going to be about the same. High of 77 degrees, low of 52. Sunny with a west wind 5 to 10. Beautiful wind today. Calm conditions. Just beautiful day. Beautiful week. 
Feels like the Masters, but we're on Lake Murray. Yeah, yeah, and special things happen at the Masters and at the Bassmasters, and one of those special things is your power pull replay of the day. And, you know, there's some anglers who like to catch them one at a time, but why not catch two at once? Yeah, this is absolutely our power pull replay of the day so far. Heck, the way they're biting, maybe someone else will do this, but Brandon Cobb has already gotten it done this morning, catching two at a time, and not just two at a time, but two good ones a five pounder and the other one two and a quarter maybe two and a half pounds that's the way to get it done there brandon cobb look at that one the, the bigger one that's a solid solid fish for brandon cobb even if he had just caught one that would be a nice one but he doubled up power pole replay of the day a very very worthy power pole replay of the day our day one leader, a four-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier, the always entertaining, sometimes shocking, sometimes startling, but always entertaining, Matt Robertson has uh, had an eventful tournament, Davey Height. Yes, he has. He had some, some issues on day one when he caught the 25 pounds. Only fished, uh, you know, probably missed two hours of fishing time. Falling back a little bit, but he's got a big one on now. He has been 100% fishing the shad and blueback heron spawn. Has not, have not seen him mixing in any sight fishing. Well, I thought he was great big, but we'll take him. Swim baiting, baby. Yeah. Oh. Oh, do not let me catch him like this. Ain't a giant. But all we need is a couple giants. And then we're getting somewhere. And these stupid coal bombers. That I should have probably got a little more up. Get the broken one. Let's see. Oh, that's a little bit. That's a good call. Yeah, that's good. Let's I just actually sat on stage yesterday. He had boat troubles track. yesterday. Like, like, oh, really? Literally, quote was, I need a new boat tomorrow, or I, my boat will not make it back. I don't know what's going on. He said there's a so short somewhere. So hopefully he got that figured out. But he said on stage he, he thought a buddy was bringing him a new boat because he, he said, I can't fish out of that boat. Wow. That must not have worked out, or he must have found the problem because I'm pretty sure it's the same boat. Yeah, no, it definitely is the same boat. He's still only got three cold rings and one of them broke <laughs> it's definitely the same boat <laughs> oh boy here comes patrick That's walters cool. again Like a fish, it'll help Patrick Walters. He's got one. That's a better fish. Oh, yeah. 212 is a smaller fish. Definitely over 212. Got her. Whew. There we go. I forgot the old sea rig. That's a better one. You think that's going to call the purple finally? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say so. Right, now we need to figure out purple really our smallest. That's a good one. That's a good one. What are you? Not bad. Make sure I don't fish without making a cast. We know it's purple. I just want to double check though. God, I, when they get all the same size, it's so hard to tell. Orange is good. Yellow ain't got one. Blue. 
I don't think I've been put bullet. Purple was just smaller. Blue was good. Orange was good. And then we have green, which green is good. Purple's the smallest. You just got to be sure you don't want to make that mistake. Green's heavier. Especially in this event. You look oh, at yeah. it. I mean, we've said it all week, all right. but the standings Blue. look like you're looking at an Oneida Lake tournament. Yeah, it's that absolutely. Tight. Yep. Back out to a four box Hunter Shryock, Koya Fujita. John Cox and Brock Mosley. All of them trying to search down their first Elite Series title. It's interesting, too. Well, look at Hunter and John and Brock. Again. They're all fishing. John's going around a dot now, but they're all fishing like two feet and less. And out on the water this morning, I saw Koya. He's fishing out just in the abyss, I call it. Yeah, he's just not even paying attention to boat docks or any any shoreline cover or anything at all. He's just uh, searching with, with forward wow. faces. Wow, what a bass. All right. Highly totted rookie. Obviously, everybody so, from uh, Japan, like anybody yeah, connected to this sport uh, has said, I think made watch Florida. this guy. Uh, they're pretty tasty. Um, tried to bring them on as a sponsor. They want someone that works out a little more than I do. <laughs> but they taste good, so I drink them. And I feel like they're, they say they're a little bit healthier than uh, the other ones. Let's do that logo. Maybe if I start hitting the gym a little, you know? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Right. Probably not gonna happen. They'll probably, they're probably looking for a more Tyler Rivette, you know, younger guy, guy that hits the gym every night. <laughs> All right. How's Let's, the fishing been? What? How's the fishing been? Fishing's John been pretty Cox tough, but that's been every day for us. I mean, you guys fun. are watching how every day's been. I mean, it's just been a complete grind, barely catch five, run into some at the end of the day, uh, just staying alive, you know? And uh, I really thought where we started was gonna be a really good spot. And I mean, it was good for the, the one fish we got. But uh, besides that, it's been kind of tough, so. But I'm excited. You know, right now we're in like the uh, magical couple hours where, um, you know, they bite when you throw at them. So maybe we'll see some, we'll throw at them. I had some real nice ones just follow us. I don't know, it can happen quick. So good sponsorships. So, hey, who says you can't pitch a new sponsor while you're on Always. live? Really? We're live. Really funny, listen to him say. Probably want somebody that works oh, out a little more well, than me. We're just, um, we're plugging away. We hit a little flurry there and we're trying to, we're trying to make do with what we got. But I feel like this is our best part of the day. And we're running, we're running towards the end of it. But from now till check-in, this should be better than this morning. But I just know that little bit of window right there makes all the difference in the world to get those bites. And the fish are around, it's just a matter of the fish biting. And they go to biting. Um, we, had some, we had some good opportunities and, uh, you know, we missed, missed one big one. But out of the course of three days, it's gonna happen. We just got to put it behind us. It's tough to do, but it happens. So we really need, we need two big ones. Three big ones would be nice, but really two, we need a five or a six pounder and another four. And um, yeah, it's just, been, it's been a different day again. Caught one on a jig, caught some off boat docks. Caught one on the Chapo, two on the Chapo. 
just kind of rolling with what we what we got. How's it going? We're going all right. Covering this event from all angles, Davey Height, uh, above the water and below the water. Some look at uh, this incredible playing field and what our anglers are dealing with this week. This footage, courtesy of Wes Miller and Brian Evie out there. Oh, there's the target. That's there, what you want. There it is. So you notice that vegetation. I think that's one thing that has really helped this lake uh, just be so good. We've had a little vegetation in the lake for the last uh, four or five years, and it's, it's really helped the population of fish. Really cool to see our largemouth bass running those gar away. They're not scared of a gar. A lot of gar up shallow right yes. now. Yeah. They're up there feeding yeah. just like the bass are. They sure are. I mean, so many people think that a gar will spook bass away, but they don't They don't care about no stinking gar. <laughs> They'll make them leave. <laughs> <laughs> Get on out of here, gar. Great footage, though. Great footage. That is Lake Murray underwater. That fish is that fish is on a bed. Great stuff. You ever catch those car? Oh yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, oh they're fun. Yeah, had nothing else to do. Go catch gar. Absolutely, I've always just enjoyed catching fish. They don't have to be bass. Just having fun. I've caught them using a the top water with like the the stinger, little treble stinger on it. But there's a lot of people who actually fish with yellow rope yes, you know the nylon. yellow rope your nylon rope you hang that off and their teeth get stuck in it i have heard that but i've never done that but i've heard that some people do that to actually nylon sticks to their teeth i use just cut bait well, there you go that'll work <laughs> that'll work sorry we got distracted by the gar it's all about the bass here this is the third stop of the 2023 bass master elite series Let's have a look at our leaderboard. We've seen Hunter Shryock have an incredible day, and it has resulted in our leaderboard. Up the top with 64 pounds, 11 ounces. Day two leader, Drew Benton. We've had a different leader every single day of this tournament. Davey Heider, we're going to have a new leader again today. Uh, it looks like it. It definitely looks like it. And I hope so. And heck, it might change again by Sunday. There's just so many fish being caught so many different ways. Oh, and look at there in fifth place, Mike Iaconelli trying to go back to back 10 cuts on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Lots of fishing ahead from the marathon Bassmaster Elite. Yeah! Buzz order! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Welcome back to sunny South Carolina and a tribute to our Bassmaster Classic champion right there, the, the mighty Canadian geese. <laughs> a lot of nature in this part of the world, this beautiful sunny South Carolina and uh, Lake Murray country, we've been covering it from above the water, below the water, in the boats, out of the boats. It has showed out this week. What an incredible, incredible part of the world. And uh, our anglers have showed out in a big, big way. And one that you wouldn't be shocked showing out this time around. A guy who's fished these blueback lakes a lot. A two-time Elite Series champion, Jason Williamson. Jason, what a real good day yesterday. He got a lot of experience. He said he was trying to throw bigger baits. Maybe not catch as many, but catch some bigger fish on average. But he's got a spinning rod in his hand today. That's the whole thing about a body of water like this. Every time you look at that map, you see how many coves, cuts, turns, and yeah. so even though it's a lot windier today, you can see there's always somewhere where you can get yeah. slick real, water. Real good point. And like you said, most of the anglers were hoping for more wind, but watching Koya this morning, it seemed like he wanted the calmer banks. 
or helpful for what he's doing with the forward facing sonar. Yeah, Jason Williamson definitely mixing it up. Uh, that looks like a a drop shot, and he was uh, gave credit to his heavier stringer yesterday oh. using bigger baits. A little tougher day for him today, I guess. Those look just like my coal rings. They are, as a matter of fact. They are? They are. He's on the first first morning before takeoff. He's like asking everybody if they had a balance beam. And nobody's going to give up their balance beam. And nobody carries two. But I didn't need mine, so I, I, I went to my boat and let him borrow my balance beam. You better not let Matt Robertson know that. <laughs> Back out live, four box, Patrick Walters, Hunter Shryock, Drew Benton, and Brock Mosley. And Drew Benton, our day two leader. Things have gotten a little tougher for him today, it seems. A, a little, but I, I'm still very impressed. You know, I shouldn't yeah. be. He's one of the best sight fishermen in the, on the planet. But, uh, gosh, just the majority of these fish have already spawned. And I, I just felt like that's something that would go away. It'd be hard to do, very, very difficult to do for four days. But... He's certainly been able to make it work so far. This morning he was saying he thought he'd mix in a little more, try to fish the points and, and fish for some of those fish on the you know post spawn that are on these shad spawn and blueback heron spawn. But we haven't seen him on camera doing anything but sight fishing so far. It doesn't surprise me to see Hunter doing well where he's at and what he's doing, but it does surprise me that he's got a lead. You know, that he's got a, a solid lead for yeah. this tournament. I just didn't think you could basically just fish the bank and, and win this event, and right now he's doing it. He's fished one stretch of bank, but it is a very long stretch of bank, you know. The thing, like you mentioned, there's so much shoreline here for the size of the lake. 50,000 acres, but 650 miles of shoreline. And you have to believe at this point in the tournament, for both Benton, Triac, or whether they're sight fishing or whatever, you get your job done today, you're five fish away. Right. And, and I, oh, yeah, and yeah. I'm never going to bet against a Drew Benton to catch five giants tomorrow. I, and I don't care yeah. <laughs> how late in the spawn it is. I mean, there is fish moving away, yep. but it's Drew Benton. Yep. It's John Cox. <laughs> very, very good point. They and, need five. And there's definitely five fish still, five quality fish that will still be on the bed on Championship Sunday. You're right. Just make it there, and there's got to be five left. And, and wouldn't bet that John Cox or Drew Benton couldn't find the last five on the leg that are spawning. I don't think it's the last five, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's, uh, they make it a Sunday, anything can happen. And I certainly think he's going to. Brock mostly sitting in ninth it. place. Be good to see him in the 10. Snake. Snake? Slithery. Like Slithery snake. And I'll be honest, I want I can only to stay in there. Oh, I want yeah. him to make it. I mean, it's if you watch his attitude at these events this year, and you don't think that attitude changes things, just watch Mike Iaconelli. I mean, Ike had his worst season of his entire career last year. Really? You know, just and he said I wasn't really locked in. He says I come into the season with a breath of fresh air. He says I'm I, I, I'm doing what I love oh. again and. I mean, it shows, not just in his standings, though. 
He's another one. If he makes it until Championship Sunday, look out. Anything's possible. Would you believe I haven't caught one all week till today? Really? Yeah. Golly, he, he hit it good. Stripers here, there's large mouth here. So that Mosley mentioned that's the first striper he's caught all week, which is a little unusual this time of year. If you're anywhere around the bank throwing moving baits, there's those striper are up shallow feeding just like the bass and the gar and everything else in this lake. Four bucks of Patrick Walters, Hunter Shryock, Drew Benton, and Brock Mosley. Do you know who we haven't checked in on for a while? Who is that? Brandon Cobb. I mean, catching him two at once, I want to watch him. Oh, well, we'll watch him from up above this time. The C O double B. Brandon Cobb. Hooked up. experience here. Ooh. That's a cool shot. Seeing how shallow he was fishing. That a very, very cool aerial shot. Courtesy of Wes Miller. I mean, he had us underwater footage, and now he's got us aerial <laughs> footage. I wonder if, if Brandon Cobb, he's delivered a lot. But I wonder if he can deliver a little more for us, Davey Hyde. I wonder if he can, I wonder if he can go right ahead and to, well, let's see what he's doing with this fish. He's checking to see if that goes. He'll deliver. He's like John Cox. He uh, he just has fun when he's out here. He'll deliver. Always delivers. So what this is, this is an underspin. This one's actually, so I've made it myself for years. And then I kind of got the prototype, the greenfish tackle, and this is like, just a blade runner that they make. It's a horse head, typical South Carolina bait, and uh, a little bit longer wire. I'm using a bigger swim bait on it. I got a good bait. It's a, I use a 3.8, I use this bigger swim bait. I got one right here. I use a 3.8 Zoom swimmer, Z swim. And if you have, with a typical underspin, that wire's too short, the blade will hit the belly. So it's a little bit longer. Keep it out there. Hey, your Bass Pro Shop's top lures, so I was wondering if he'd deliver. And I knew that was yes, smoke. He, he ate everything off. <laughs> Something a little different. Haven't seen anyone else throwing an underspin here on these points. Brandon Kyle's mixing it up, though. He's caught some on that baby. He's also a jerk bait, some top water. Uh, he certainly, like you mentioned, a lot of these anglers that have experience fishing for these fish that are feeding on the blueback here and have a lot of rods on the front deck, a lot of rods. Back out live to a four box, Patrick Walters, Brandon Cobb, Hunter well, Shryock. We need one from Drew there again ben. now. We got the the bush fish too, the tree tree troll or whatever the heck we call it. Jerry the tree troll. Dang it, Hunter, you know better than that. And there's two big ones in it. Looks the last like Brandon's time. up there looking around for one now. I haven't seen him do that, but he's Got his head on a swivel looking around for a spawning fish, it looks like. Drew Benton definitely doing that. It's like he's fishing for one on the bed. Not Patrick Walters. Biggins. No. Patrick Walters out there. 
with 42 rods on his front deck, catching those fish feeding on the blueback herring. Yeah, and I don't think your count's far it's off. I'm going to look at it. <laughs> it's a mess of rods. I mean, they were small. And that's probably a good thing. Long, still. Brandon Cobb, no stranger to sight fishing, it. but he, he's talked about it a lot. He said, I, I think I'm a decent sight angler. Oh. I'm just not good at judging oh, the size the of them. <laughs> if you remember in Fork, he thought that giant was a five. <laughs> yeah. Or a six or whatever. He, it, got it, up and he left. definitely that's didn't good. say it was that's an 11 good. pounder. Now, he's a great sight fisherman. He is a great sight fisherman. I've fished with him. His eyes are really, really good, and, and he knows how to catch them when he sees them. But he can see fish that most, a lot of people cannot. I'm not going to say Drew Benton can't do the same, but blessed with really good eyes. Drew Benton can see fish that fish can't see. I mean, Drew Benton has, <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, when, when's the last time we had a sight fishing event that he wasn't in the mix? Yeah, that's a good point. And all these guys can sight fish. I mean, they they can. But you're right. When you when you go to an event and there's spawning bass, Drew Benton's going to be in the mix. It is amazing how Hunter has been able to throw that chopo in six inches of water. It doesn't matter if it's 12 noon or 7 a.m. back to Hunter, and he's still and doing bites. the same stupid stuff. <laughs> and we're live. <laughs> Could he hear me? I didn't say stupid. <laughs> if you look at the leaderboard, it doesn't seem that stupid. No, no. It's like he's a very smart guy. <laughs> Why is there certain baits? A chopo is one of those baits that gets... Bigger than average bites. It just seems it's one of those baits you put in your hand. But why are certain baits big bite getters? Ah, uh, that's a great question. Typically, is the the short answer is bigger baits get bigger bites, but that's not always the case. But it does, you know, if you're targeting bigger fish, bigger baits. But there's something that is almost mesmerizing to bigger fish about a buzz bait, that chopo, the whopper, you know, any of those type baits. Um, it's just something that a lot of those bigger fish just can't resist. Yeah. I don't know if it's a territorial thing or probably just as much territorial as they're actually feeding. They just don't like something making that much noise in, in and around them. Oh, from one four box to another. Matt Robertson, Koya Fujita, John Cox, and Jason Williamson. Koya is, I mean, he's having a tough day today, but a lot of fishing time ahead. But his story is so amazing. You know, he's only 26 years old. Started fishing tournaments. You can't fish tournaments in Japan until you're 18. He didn't start fishing the top level of tournaments until he was 20. He's 26 years old. He's won the Angler of the Year title at the top level in Japan four times, Davey Height. Oh, Lord. Four and for six. You can't start until you're 18. You can't start fishing tournaments until you're 18. Wow. And then... He started fishing tournaments when he was started at the top level when he was 20. Um, and, yeah. he's a, So, oh, from oh, basically from 20 to 26, he's won four AOIs. Yeah. Holy smokes. Four for six, assuming he fished this year. Any, yeah. Anytime someone qualifies for the elites in their first year of the Open, that, that's like, wow. But he's done that and a whole lot more. How oh, water doesn't fall on it. Yeah. About seven I had eight. so much fun out on the water telling Sego to stay back away from Koya. Do not get that close to him. <laughs> well, the highly touted rookie is showing off that uh, people knew what they were talking about, but not shocking. A four-time angler of the year. And in that time, he also won six events. Wow. I mean, you look at that. Uh, at 26 years old. Yeah. So I was talking to one of the spectators yesterday at, at the at the weigh-in, and they said they'd been keeping up with Koya, I guess, YouTube or online for, for many years, and, and he just couldn't couldn't stop complimenting what a great angler. He said he'll win this year on the Elite Series. He said, you wait till he gets up north because this is not especially. Yeah. And this is a guy from South Carolina that was telling me all about Koya. I mean, he he's like, he's absolutely incredible. And at this point, nobody can argue that. I mean, True. it's early, but I mean, he's already got a second. He was this close to winning right. our last event. Yep. 
Oh, boy. Started with 104.50 out there today, and we're looking for our top 10. Koya Fujita, who we've been talking about a bunch, is going to have to do some rallying to get right in the mix again. But you look right top that leaderboard. Three days in a row, we've had three different leaders. Our unofficial leader right now, Hunter Shryak, leading with 64 pounds, 11 ounces. Who's the sneaky one you got to keep an eye on, Davey Height? Ah, I don't know if I call it sneaky, but Patrick Walters and Brandon Cobb, not just because they're from South Carolina, but they're catching so many fish. They're due to catch a big one. Lots of fish and yet to come. Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray. Don't go anywhere. In a few minutes, you'll be joined by TZ, Ronnie, and Such at the Marathon Studios. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by... Ranger Boats. Yamaha. Toyota. And by Dakota Lithium. Our live coverage continues here. Third day of competition, the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray. This is also known as the uh, convening of the Lake Murray Fan Club because this place has given us a lot to love. Some great, great fishing going on out here during these uh, first two and a half, actually more than two and a half days as it stands right now. We've got about two and a half hours of fishing left to go for our at least our first flight anglers. And there it is, Hunter Shryock there at the top of the leaderboard. And Drew Benton in third place. Uh, Z, it's kind of a, a little bit of the triumph of the bank beaters for now anyway, right? <laughs> I would say so, Tommy Sanders. Definitely a lot of shifting going on in that top 10, especially here in the last few minutes. Uh, Brian Smith definitely got in there during our FS1 broadcast, but seeing Bernie Schultz make a big rise. Kenta Kamara always hanging around that top 10 spot, not kind of out of nowhere. You have to give it up. Drew Cook, really nobody saw that coming today, but rooming with Drew Benton, you pretty much know what he's doing. No doubt about it. Your marathon peak performance with... A lot of room to grow. His small one in his bag right now was at 8.07. Looking at 22 pounds and six ounces unofficially. And Drew Cook, one of those ones that's kind of a under guesser. Tommy mm -hmm. Sanders, marathon peak performance. One of the Drews, Drew Cook. And guess semifinal what? Semifinal Saturday. Yeah, guess, guess what, what else? He just, he just, he just upgraded. He's now 24 pounds on the day. Give me a break. So got got a four eight. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. No, he didn't. He did. He's up to fourth <laughs> place from 44th. Bernie Schultz from, hey, Bernie, Bernie Schultz was 44th. Whoa. He's got 23.7. My gosh. With a two pounder in there. Wow. Things are popping. As predicted by the man we're headed out to right now, Hunter Shryock says, uh, we are rolling Suit up. Suit likes the, that. The big part of the day. You can see the big oh, bag fall today. The big bass as well has a chance to Could fall. Be a, yeah. Could wow. just Cook from 38th. This thing wide open here. Schultz from 44th in our top 10. Close to 60 pounds, both of them. Leader Hunter Shryock. It's been sort of a dream tournament for him. I think they're on to us. Giant, come on, come on, come on. Come on, yeah. Six pounder. Well, Hunter Shryock has been pretty much flawless the whole tournament, but you throw under those walkways like he was yesterday, you're going to fool around and find out uh, in a big okay. way. And he did on that one right there, Tommy <laughs> Sanders. Yeah, that was, that was unfortunate. Six pounder, he said. Yeah, and really kind of been watching his track. It is amazing how, whether it's been the shallow riprap or the docks, he is really, Ronnie, we talked about on FS1, he has covered one general section back and forth, and these fish are con 
continuously reloading on these shallow water stretches for Hunter Shryock. Bad miss right mm, there for mm, the mm. Tennessee angler. It was a five and a half to six pounder. Mm. Oh, what a day, what a day. We gotta get our stuff together. My execution today has not been not been good but I was just saying we've had a lot of stuff go our way to get us here to this point the weight that we've had you're not going to do it without some adversity you're just you're hooking you're hooking too many big fish in places that it's tough to get them out of you're catching them on stuff that it's not real super He's got and I'm flipping. I don't think so. I don't know, maybe. Let's see what you weigh, buddy. Got a couple of three pounders in there. It's wavy, it's gonna be hard to tell. He needs to be 293, so I don't know about that. I feel like this is gonna be another balance beam. Be oh no, it cut off. Another balance beam fish, probably. <laughs> He's the same. I'm just gonna balance beam him. Number one. Fish, y'all are not making it easy to call today. Oh, we just pulled on my stuff. Golly, that feels like a good one. I don't think he's that big, but... Feels better. He's not bad. He might call out that one. Whew. It's gotta be bigger than three something. Oh yeah, he's a healthy fish. Oh yeah, there we go, getting better. He's good fish. Gonna double check it. I said blue. Yep, we're good, blue. Orange one more time. Orange is good. Green. Dang, come on, that green. Green's good. That was three on that side. And Well, that is about the first time that we've seen Jake Whitaker not on the one spot that he has lived yeah. on days one and two earlier today. And <laughs> boy, that spot that 
he said had 20 to 30 fish busting on it late yesterday afternoon definitely has not played so one of the questions coming into this early in the tournament could a guy live on one of those points one of those little rock veins shallow water hard spots where the fish were corralling whether herring or shad for jake whitaker no yeah. six to 36 three fish yeah got a couple hours left Tyler Rovette had actually lost the AOI lead to Carl Jacobson, but he just got a three pounder. He's back in there, and I think Brandon Cobb and Jacobson are tied for second. Don't let him hear us. Rovette just caught another. I'm going to catch him one of these times. Shrack in his sixth year with the elites here. Made one cut this season out of two opportunities so far. There he is. Gosh dang it. He comes out to see us every time. You're coming with me tomorrow, bud. That's a giant. Boy, it is amazing how those little shade lines where he's done a lot of damage on those little shade lines on those overhangs have wow. continuously reloaded. We do need to go back uh, to that one stretch where we caught that last topwater fish. It might have the wind blowing on it too hard though. Just trying to think where we need to spend our time. Boy, I'm Koya Fujita with two bass That's hard. in his live well. One kind of surprising on that. Ronnie, how'd that face, that FaceTime go last night with Koya? Oh. Uh, it turns out he has an Android and they don't have FaceTime available. So I would have had to Skype Do not. Zoom him. So, you know, he's, okay. he lucked out on that one. Hmm. All right. You know, those guys with green text messages, you can't, you know, just yeah. stand yeah. it, you know. What you're saying? You gonna be mad with me? I forgot about it. <laughs> Ronnie, has he... Has he ever replied to your texts? Nope. Oh, the best hype man ever. Okay. <laughs> Take some time and think about it. I look forward to the day he does, though. You All know. right. Absolutely. Like, I'm going to actually start taking what I typed to him Stretch. and putting it in translator and just copying mouse. that and sending it. Sounds, and see if, sounds seeing, risky to me. Seeing that seems response. very risky to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It could be one of two words. Hopefully it's not the, the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think I'd do that, Ronnie. But that's just me. Boy, with a little bit of mechanical issues earlier today on our Fox broadcast. Oh, I think he lost. Mass. Ronnie and Suits were talking, might have lost near an hour yep. fishing earlier. 12.56. We got 19 pounds. Vegeta's the only one in our top 35 without a limit. He's got two fish. Got two nice ones though, a five, three, and a three, six.
one fish, he's back in the top 10. A jerk bait, but I'll throw jerk bait in a second. Goslings, right out in front of our man John Cox. Looks like Whitaker may have found a bedfish, possibly, as he fished along the bank. Love to see one blow up on one of those goslings. Oh gosh. <laughs> well, I, I would. I absolutely would. He Others watch and feel the him. same way. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I have actually. Yeah. thought for a second that John was just chasing them. He wasn't really casting too much. He's just 100 on the troll motor. He's protecting his turf. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I think I might catch that one real quick. I think so. Because then I'll get rid of He'll get what it rid of one of them small ones. Tommy, as I understand it, we've got five and a half hours tomorrow on FS1? We do, uh, starting at 8 a.m. Wow. Eastern time, five and That's a half a... hours, man. It's a wow. It's a marathon. So the champ yeah. championship Sunday. It'll be fun, It'll be a big day. That is for sure, we'll have weather that's a little bit different from today. We were supposed to be lashed with rain by this time, and we, it has not, not appeared. Uh, we've got partly sunny skies, generally agreeable conditions, a little more wind, some guys like it, some don't. Hunter Shryock liking what's happening out there. He's got to be. Although most of these guys, as, as was mentioned earlier, that uh, everyone thinks everyone else is catching 25 pounds today, so that, that keeps you motivated. Patrick Walters up in second. Drew Benton, Drew Cook, the Drews right there together. Drew Cook making a big, big move today. Jason Williamson, Bryant Smith, Mike Iaconelli, and the rest. More fishing on the way when we return. Yeah! On the water! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. A couple of hours left fishing time for our first flighters. There's some dogs Ow. who are waiting, waiting back, back at He's the ramp there. He's a good there. boy. Yes, sir. Arf, He's a arf, good arf. boy. Yeah. Yes. They'll be greeting He's their owners when boy. they return. Boy, we got a lot of dogs out there today. This is this is bring your dog to to the weigh-in day, I suppose. Oh, that one's kind of, he's locked up. He's locked on. That's the easiest one to keep clean and That's contained. Right. That one won't bite you either. <laughs> Let's get back out on the water. 10 anglers whom we are with all day, in the boats with them all day today. That's the way they're spread out across the 50,000 acres of Lake Murray. Our place, this has turned out to be Where's that Bernie Schultz? Cause he just got over 25 pounds. Oh my gosh! Wow. 25 nine wow. on Bass Track, third place from wow. 44th. Our Shrock, your leader. Still with about a four-pound lead as well. Yeah, it's impressive. Well, I'm watching a seven pounder swim off in front of me right now. Same one me and Brandon's been seeing for the past two days. Can't get her to bite. We, uh, we salvaged a day, but man, we've had a chance at a great day, but the day's not over. We, have, we still have a lot of time to get that one or two five and a half to six pound bites. It's, that's what's gonna keep me in contention to win this thing. 
and I'm really close to just pulling the plug on this and just running a lot of new water, fishing the way that I like to fish. And um, yeah, uh, I just feel like this has gone away from me with the wind. Not saying that you can't, it just hasn't been as productive. So um, we're gonna keep, keep an open mind. And uh, you know, we, we got, I think a good part of the day is still left just because of this front that's moving through. And these places are just, they're so weather dependent and you just got to roll with the conditions that the day gives you and the fish are still there but if you got the right weather for them to bite they'll bite and i've had more bites today it just hasn't been the type of day for a top water i think too much too much wind but i know what i need to do i just gotta kind of run like a madman this last two hours and see if we can't put put a big one in the box give us a chance there's a lot of seven and eight pounders in here a lot of them they're just really smart <laughs> Whew. brim for all the fish he's caught today boy he has seen hundreds more he has he has got, either got himself around him well, or he's got the best set of I've eyes around him. I've hunted and hunted and I hadn't run into one yet. I, I've caught just about everything that I've seen that I thought was catchable, that I thought would help me. And, uh, you know, I ran the, the point deal this morning when it was cloudy and windy and that didn't, didn't pan out. I had some busting around me. But we still got two hours left and we're looking at new water right now this is a area that i left off of yesterday and um, i think i've just done caught everything in the areas i've been fishing because i fished through them today and didn't see anything so we will uh keep our head down we still got like i said two out close to two hours and it don't take but finding the right couple to get right back in it His roommate has definitely run into them. Big, big stringer for Drew Cook, just under 25 pounds. Gotta imagine he's probably doing the same thing. Yep. Uh, it's been going okay. You know, I'm catching a bunch of fish. Anywhere, anywhere we go, oh my God, there's a big one. Anywhere we go, we can catch fish. So that's not, that's not an issue. It's just uh, we've got to get some size. We've got to get us a big one. That's the difference maker on Murray. When all the fish are the same size, you've got to catch a big one. Dang. I think it's bigger than that. Not a bad fish, real healthy looking fish. You know, catching plenty of fish. Fishing's not a problem. But we gotta find big ones. <laughs> They're all two and three quarters, three pounds. I mean, she's not gonna go. I mean, beautiful, beautiful fish. There's the female. If that's a if that's what that is. Oh god. Oh she's moving too much, I think. Mm. She's heading out the deep. It's 
a big fish. On the right there, Bryant Smith, California. Just going back and forth, back. Fantastic and day going on here. 19 plus. We know a lot of uh, anglers have high pedigree coming into the Elite Series as a rookie. Uh, at least the last few classes for sure have had that. But Bryant Smith was one that was echoed by a lot of people that have gone out of their way to message us and let us know that he was, he was the real deal. And the first two yes. probably not in his wheelhouse, but the next couple he's starting to get his traction on the Elite Series. Yeah, absolutely. Heard the exact same thing. California guy near the Sierras here, Folsom Lake, places like that. Our lone California angler on the Elite Series. Yeah, yeah, well that's right, I never thought about that. He's moving up in our Rookie of the Year race. It was fifth today and I think uh, he's gonna move up past Cifuentes, maybe gassing if he falls down. Will Davis will probably leave this event as the Rookie of the Year leader. He just filled his limit. Oh, uh -oh. Are Fact right now, Such, that you have Kyoya Fujita, Bryant Smith, David Gaston, and Joey Cifuentes from 21st to 25th in Angler of the Year. Show, I mean, they're the top of the rookie class, and they're all in the top 25, but so, so bunched together. Yeah, Davis is ninth now. And then Will overall up ahead, yeah. And Brandon Card, he's 27th. Remember day one, he was 95th. Had a 22 pound bag, got up to yeah. 35th. He's doing okay today, 16 pounds, 27th place. Salvaged 70 points in AOI. With the weather and the, the wind and definitely the boat traffic. Not so much the, the bass boats, but we've had some trouble with some striper boats that uh, dragging across actually this point I caught a five pounder and then there were the, the striper boat was literally like 20 yards from me I could have threw in his boat and he was kind of coming at me so I put the fish in the live well and um, Chola motored out of his way to, to get out of his way and uh, after he after he went over the point I <clears throat> stood back up and made a cast without culling so that was the first time I ever did that Hope it's the last. <laughs> so I had a, I got a two pound penalty and obviously threw my smallest one back, had to call Lisa. So not, not good, but um, I've only, I've only caught one of the right ones. So, you know, we got four chunks and then we got one of the right ones. So we got a little bit of time left. We're just gonna keep, keep casting at them and, and uh, hope we pull up on one of these places when one of the bigger ones are ready to feed. It's, um, you know, I've been dragging around a lot, you know, because it's been slick and I haven't caught, I mean, I've caught a few on top water, but not many. And um, today, uh, you know, as I stated yesterday, today was one of them days where I think all the fish on the point are feeding and some of the smaller ones obviously beat the, the better quality to the bait. So. We've had that happen a few times, especially on our starting spot. We're catching uh, smaller fish than we've caught all week there. So it's just one of them deals where I kept catching them and I'm like, man, these ain't the ones that win. So I just kept, I just ran around and just had to make do the best we can. But we haven't been long caught one and I've had a couple bites right here on, on some moving baits and uh, one missed it and then two of them jumped over it and missed it again. So, you know, it's one of them deals. It's timing. Just like I said yesterday, we still could catch, you know, three big ones before we go in. So that's what we're gonna have to do. 
Tommy, that two pound penalty is huge for Williamson right now in sixth place with 59 two. Oof. You subtract two because it's not reflected on Bash Track. That's at 57 two, and that would be 10th place by three ounces, barely in. Mm. He definitely needs to call a couple of those oh. just okay fish out. Got him that time. Let's see, it was down there deep. I, I think he'll call, but I'm not, I'm not sure how big he is. He actually seems like he's running pretty good. I mean, he should be a good three pounder. Oh, come on, don't go in that stick. Oh God, he went in the stick. Come out this way. Okay, come back. Come on, get out of that grass. Oh God. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh. Come on, baby. Come out from under the boat. Oh yeah. Come here. Come here. Ah, oh, geez, I don't know. He might call though. I mean. No, they're all the same size, I think. Maybe. Well, we got to keep moving. I forgot if it was black or, I think it was black. I think black was the small one. Oh, hold on, buddy. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, yeah, way bigger than black, huh? Oh. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Black. And then the other small one's green, maybe? Oh, 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 God, that'd be terrible. Oh, stay in there. Yeah, green's definitely bigger than black, I think. Yeah. All right, so green's next. All right, we balance beam these, right? God, green feels tiny, too. We just need to get rid of that sucker. Yeah, green's a little bigger. All right, so black's going back. Keeping green. Yep. Okay. All right, now we know what we're looking for. Because now we just got to find a big one. All right, let's keep moving. I think we're going to, uh, I'm going to burn the rest of this pocket. And then I think we're going to, I think we're going to run. Oh guys, it's uh it's been uh it's been a grind. I mean we really we had one decent opportunity where I threw to one and lost it in the tree and everything else we've just been grinding, picking up one here and there. It started off so well this morning with that big one and uh it's kind of been slow since, you know. But uh you know now we're gosh, I don't know. <laughs> now now we're trying to figure out you know, do we stop on one that's four pounds or we wait till we find a five or six pounder? So it's really tough to decide what to do. That one there, so it's like a, probably a, maybe a four pounder, but really took off fast. But I think we should probably just, we need to find a big one. We got, we, it's 115, we gotta be in at three. I mean, you know, if we're, if we're supposed to make the cut, you know, maybe we'll, we'll see one and be able to catch it. But I think that's what we're going to need to make it in. I think we're going to need like a, maybe a five or six pounder, I'm guessing. And yesterday when it got like this, I ended up catching a nice four just casting. But. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Joseph Webster just became our fourth angler, over 20 pounds with a four pounder, and Steve Kennedy, six pound catch. How about that? He's up to 19 pounds, four ounces.
Still got a Hunter Shryock on top of our leaderboard right now with a good, pretty healthy lead. Ahead of Patrick Walters, Bernie Schultz, big move today. Yeah, and really that's been the, fair to say, the best lead of this event by mm -hmm. Hunter Shryock, kind of pulling away from second place a little bit here on semifinal Saturday. Man that started the day with the lead, Drew Benton, down there about five pounds back in fifth place. More to come. Still got well over an hour of fishing left for our first flighters. Yes! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Hope your Saturday, your weekend is going great. We are having a great tournament here. What has turned out to be of course, we knew this. We saw this coming a little bit. I mean, Lake Murray, one of the hottest lakes in the world right now for tournament fishing. Ten anglers right there that we have been with all day long. Our top ten to start this day after the first two days of fishing. And man, oh man. Of course, it's start time. It's starting to be time to start thinking about that number ten spot and who's above it, who's below mm -hmm. it. Because you need to be above it when it's all said and done. You want a shot at the championship tomorrow. Out to Brandon Cobb. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it hadn't been a great day. Really, the difference is though, I've been catching like 17, 18, maybe 19 off heron points, and I've been able to catch a good one shallow every day, and haven't really caught a good one shallow today. Haven't I caught like a three pound or 290? I called him, so it's uh, kind of hadn't been hadn't been as good as I expected with the wind and stuff. I I kind of made probably what was a bad decision rather than going to run a bunch of new stuff that I had farther down. Had a few places I thought I had fish on, and I just kind of tried to make a milk run, hitting some of the same spots again, letting the fish reset. But it didn't, so far has not worked out. We still got a few places we hadn't hit, so. Still might get a late day one, but it uh, kind of slow-ish, I guess. I mean, I've caught like 35 fish today, so it's not that slow. But it ha hadn't caught the four pounders like I've been catching. Bunch of three pounders. I've been weighing them, two, 280s to about 290 somethings, plenty of those. I got one fish under three pounds right now, 297 I think. Been a good day, just hadn't got the quality that I have been. Well, really, we're one bite from what I've been catching. Short one today. The double he had earlier, both fish kind of called out. Of the yes. Yeah, that was unusual. It's a real bummer when you catch 35 between two and three pounds. Just <laughs> yeah, things are not like clicking. Shoot, things man. are not clicking on the water. It's right. not so good. Make a little move right now. Take yeah. you over to 13th place now, Kyoya Fujita. Started the day well up in our top 10, fourth place. Keeper number three, but definitely started the day with a one between five and six pounds. So big fireworks yesterday for Pajita this time of day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Tommy, you're going to take a look at some of his fish catches. That obviously has not been going so well. Getting information with Ronnie and myself, mm. self-admitted, man. Uh, it has not gone very well. Don't be scared. 
to slide in his DMs later tonight and see if you can crack the code <laughs> of what exactly is going yeah, on. I'll, I'll make it a point to write know a, a note. single yeah. person sure. that doesn't want sure, to I'm talk sure to he'll just. I, I, I may be able to get through, guys. I'll give it my best. Good stuff right there. and Definitely got confirmation. Didn't want to talk about this unless he was cool with it. He did have at least on his deck. We haven't seen him use it a lot, but he was using a jackal drift minnow and a drift crab. So but as you you guys know, when he catches one, we do not get a look good look of no what no no no. It's, the fish it's are actually, biting. He does the like, he does the hand over that. here. Uh, look yeah. at this yeah. hand yeah, as right. he unhooks yeah. the other sure. hand. Yeah, I, this is a magician. I, I I see the baits on the deck of his boat, but not in the mouth of his fish. <laughs> yes. There's another one. Just needs one and a half to get in there. Top ten. Lighter wins for Championship Sunday if Vegeta moves on. Definitely the conditions probably that he is favoring that we had on days one and two. Curious to see what the colder night though does to a lot of these fish. Quick pan to his bait that he just used while he's not looking. <laughs> okay. I, 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 oh, thank you. I, Ronnie, I'm going to go as far as to say I think Fujita and our cameraman, I think that's Hunter Lindsay, probably had him, might have had a little bit of a talking to about not not zooming in on those mm. baits. <laughs> I could see that happen. Mosley, another angler started in the top 10. He's just two positions out of it right now. There he is. Stay hooked up. Uh -uh. We've seen a lot of fish come off those irrigation pipes throughout mm -hmm. this tournament too. He's getting smaller on me. Gotta be better than a two. Yeah, he's gonna help a little bit. Tommy might find this interesting. Brock Mosley, actually, a lot of his work yesterday was down near the dam. Typical kind of herring deal. Had a couple fish locked on on day one. Made that run up the river, up the Saluda yesterday, and caught a four and a half pounder said it was incredible how good the fishing was up the river about a month and a half ago. Really? Yeah, and right before yes, off limits. Yes, before it went, huh? right before it went off limits. And I'm talking giant stringers. And obviously when that shad and herring gig is going, that river kind of dies off, but did make a big, big upgrade late yesterday on a buzz bait up there. Oh, I do find that interesting. You know, I really wasn't on much after practice. I really had nothing to go by. All but two fish in the first two days I weighed in and come off beds. Um, today, I hadn't bed fished at all. Because I think, you know, they're pretty much all gone. 
for the most part, unless some moved up last night. Man, I've been seeing a bunch of big ones fishing this type of stuff here. And with the conditions we had all week, high skies, no wind, you could not get them to bite at all. And I mean, you were just wasting your time. And I figured with today's conditions that they may bite a little bit. And I thought, thought you know, since I don't have much else to do, yeah, you know, if I caught five of these, that they would weigh, you know, big, you know, low to mid 20s. But, man, I've had trouble, you know, losing fish. I lost a couple. Uh, then we had about two and a half hours with absolutely no wind. And, of course, it goes back to you see them, and it's just frustrating how many you see just going up and down the banks that are big monsters. And we finally got the wind to pick back up about 20 minutes ago, and we're just gonna grind it out, see if we can catch one more big one. I think I need one more big one to make tomorrow. Um, I mean, the only thing about it is, you know, we don't have any of those three to four pounders you need to fill your lemon. I got. You know, the two best fish I've caught all week, I've caught today. So, but from what I was on in practice to now, I mean, I'm happy to even be fishing today, much less have a chance to make Sunday. But, you know, I, I feel like, you know, if I catch two more of these fish out, out here, that I could still be, in, you know, have a shot at winning this thing. Today is really the only day that I hadn't, that I felt confident actually fishing. You know, I just felt like, you know, it was a matter of time for, you know, I can get another big bite. And the thing about it is, you know, without much wind and much cloud cover, they see the bait so good that they don't eat it very good. And that's what's caused me to lose several fish today. But that's part of being down here chasing these fish. Brock Mosley hovering around that cut line right now. He's got time to get it done, though. Got to, about an hour's time, maybe a little more than that. There's our own Dave Mercer right there, Dave with, of Dave and Davey fame, doing a great job here an hour or so ago. Really enjoyed that, Dave. What's going on right now for you? Oh, this place is jamming, guys. I mean, you know, the event after the Bassmaster Classic, I always find, you know, it's such mania. You know, a record-setting Bassmaster Classic, you come to the next event, and usually the first few days are a little quiet, and it, but this place is packed here today. We have a performance going on right now from Christian Bush, formerly of Sugarland, and right behind me, we've got a bunch of anglers and, and guests here that are taking advantage of demo rides. Demo rides are a big part of Bassmaster Elite Series events, and a big reason why if there's an Elite Series event in your area, you should get off the couch, come out here, meet all the pros, a ton of pros here, um, as there always is on a Saturday of Elite Series event, but you get to go out in the water, demo ride, whether it be Ranger Mercury, Nitro Mercury, Skeeter Yamaha demo rides, they're, as I always say, free of charge and truly exhilarating. But one thing that stands out as exhilarating to me is I just looked at Bass Track, Bernie Schultz. I mean, yesterday during the weigh-in, there were seven anglers left to weigh, I believe, and he was like, yeah, I got no shot in making it. Well, not only did he make it, but last I checked, he's rallied all the way into our top three. A lot of great stories. And the question is, can we see the pattern that we've seen? We've seen two brand new Elite Series champions this season, and we got a lot of anglers that have tried to hunt down that title for a long time. Of course, Hunter Shryock, Brock Mosley, who we're just looking at. So many great stories going into Championship Sunday. And it's good to be back here in kind of our normal existence, the Elite Series. You know, it's... It, the classic is just, I mean, it's like a rock concert, but this, this is, this is more our style. You yeah, know we kind of heard there was a rock concert. Uh, and Tommy, Tom, we talked about it on day one, about that rock concert that transpired late on Championship Sunday <laughs> at the Bassmaster Classic with a gussy party. T Dave, actually being serious, we were a little slow on catches right now. Really talk about how big of a deal it is and has been 
for a Canadian to win this Bassmaster Classic? I think it's huge. I mean, regardless of where he's from, I think Jeff Gustafson is an incredible Bassmaster Classic champion. I mean, it's what a dream champion. You know what I mean? Like it's his major win. But in Canada, I, I think it's I think it, it's it kind of explains what's happening on the Elite Series now. You know, this used to it used to be a dream that you could only achieve if you were from the south. And then along came Kevin Van Dam from the north, Mike Iconelli, and all these pros over the years. Well, now this is not a dream that is only American. We have anglers from all around the world. And in Canada, it's just kind of a big wake up call because what a lot of these guys have been doing, and I don't want to throw shade on, on some of my Canadian brethren, but I've been like, these dudes need to be not just Gussie, but the Johnsons, what they are doing, they are breaking ground, doing stuff that no Canadian had ever done. They need to be on the cover of every fishing magazine. And I'm pretty sure Jeff Gustafson is about to do that. Um, he's got some mainstream media at home, you know, the, the, the mainstream news things that normally normally don't cover a bass fishing event. Um, it's been kind of humorous to hear some of their takes on it, um, but it has been incredible to see um, Jeff Gustafson, somebody who is literally just so down to earth and uh, I couldn't be happier with this year's Bassmaster Classic champion. Neither could Canada and the entire world. I mean, no matter where you live, hung out with Tommy Woods a little bit here this morning. Tommy Woods is keep that name in mind and money many of you might have heard of him from the classic and stuff like that he was he was part of all that party and sold everything living in america for the next three months chasing this dream he's all the way from australia and the weird thing is i'm standing on the dock with him this morning and i remember when carl jacobson was that in that place with his career and you look at how hard some of these people have worked to achieve this goal it's just amazing to see that if you're willing to work it doesn't matter where you come from it doesn't matter what your history is you can make it on the elite series carl jacobson came from a country that doesn't have bass at least the bass that we have and he made the bass master elite series so you can do it from anywhere and jeff gustafson is an incredible champion absolutely i fully agree with that one more question before we let you go dave uh i would think this tournament more so than either of the two tournaments we've had already here if you are close to that 10 line that 10 cut line you are going to be massively disappointed because if you get in there this seems to be the place that has the opportunities more than anywhere we've been so far right Boy, does it ever. I mean, I've said all week, and it really does. If, if you look at that scoreboard, you, you it feels like we're on Lake Oneida. You know, it feels like we're up north on one of those fisheries where just everything is separated by ounces. But as Bernie Schultz has proved, you know, he almost didn't make the 50 cut, and now he's sitting in third place unofficially in this tournament. You get anywhere closer. This isn't one of the, Sometimes... You know, you'll have your leader with a big lead and you got people who are like, I'll take an 11th. I'll take the leisurely drive up the road to our next event and I'll take an 11th. The person who finished 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, none of them are going to be happy to believe in this, not just because of the opportunity to win, but I mean, ask any bass angler in the world that's been watching this, how bad do you want to be out there doing that? I mean, catching 10, yep. 20, 30 fish and they're on top water. I mean, it, it's, it's hard to watch as an MC, to be honest. <laughs> Dave, Tommy is a huge Christian Bush fan from Sugar Land, and well, we understand that he's snapping that concert off. Dave, what is your favorite <laughs> song from, from Christian? I think it's got to be Stay. I mean, it's, it's it, you know, it's, it's it's a sad song. It's about a, a cheating spouses, I believe. But, I mean, it doesn't yep. relate to anything, but it, it's Stay. Stay. That's, that's, that's my favorite Sugarland song and I mine too I, be honest I I'm kind of bummed that I'm missing the concert right now so uh, I'm gonna head right over there in oh, a yeah. minute we'll let you go thanks Dave so much a great Dave Mercer out there Dave made a great point we talk about history being made here if we get a third consecutive first-time winner this year in the Bassmaster Legion how strange would it be if that first-time winner was Bernie Schultz I know that's wow 400 that's events yeah it's 350 ninth BASS event yeah yeah why why not why not <laughs> Well, first reminder, this is your first reminder. Write it down now if you think to, because we've got time. We're going to take a break here in just a second here. But the weigh-in starts right here on Bassmaster.com at 3 p.m. Eastern time. That's check-in time for the first flight. And shortly after that, we will start having anglers crossing the stage. Very important weigh-in, getting into the top ten for Championship Sunday. Yeah! Another! No way! Yeah!
Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here as we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio sponsored by Marathon at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge. We talk about it all day long. Some people from across the country may not know exactly what we're referring to, but when we think about other lakes across the southeast, we think about Threadfin Shad, maybe Gizzard Shad. There's different types of forages. When we go up north, gobies are often talked about. When we're at Blueback Herring Lakes, this is the deal that drives the engine of these bass. Blueback Herring, this was a great shot from one of our marshals and our friend, Neil Paul, from down the road at Lake Hartwell. He is riding with Kenta Kamir today, who started the day in 11th place. Kenta caught this on a riser, a riser lure, and this is a blueback herring. This is exactly what these schools of fish are waiting to come across a point. And when you're trying to imitate what a blueback herring is, Z, there's a couple different baits that we've seen throw out there, different color schemes. You can have them custom painted in this part of the country to exactly mimic it. But really, it's not necessarily about the specific colors because the chromes, the, the whites, the pearls, a little bit of olive in it, uh, the blue glimmers, those things all work, but it's how you work some of these baits. Oftentimes for blueback herring, it's as fast as you can work them for some of these points. When they get active, they get frenzy, you want to throw that, uh, whether it's a super fluke, a cane walker, a magic swimmer, or a spinner bait, whatever it is, work it as quick as possible at times, get the competition level up, look like a fleeing blueback herring, and you can have some of the best action that you'll have uh, all week. We see some of the finesse tactics come out when it's calm, slick, and sunny. Today with a little wind, we saw some of those baits come into play. Ronnie, go back to that blueback herring pick. You want to talk about having a bad day. Boy, I mean, with yeah. a total skull shot. And on he, didn't even, and yeah. from, <laughs> That's, he didn't get digested, luckily, but he didn't yeah. even get the chance I mean, to yes. be. And, and, and that was good stuff, Ronnie. You talk about guys mimicking the blueback herring, but there's also the polar opposite on these points where in years past we've seen mop jigs work where – Jason Williamson throwing a big, big mag trick worm when those herring aren't up there using something totally different. Not to kill you. Fujita, just an hour ago, he just had a couple of fish in the live well. He's got four now and hooked up again. Oh, not just hooked up. Come on. Yes! Yeah! Wow. Oh, he is in tomorrow. I found that. Yep. Yes. <sighs> wow. Yeah. Tommy, that looks very pre-spawn. Oh, five, five, five. Oof. Yeah. Today, number one. Yes. <laughs> uh, very tired. Yeah. Long day. Yeah, long day. <laughs> I don't care if he's had good mornings to start day one or day two. His afternoons yesterday and today have been phenomenal. Oh, that's uh, that's <laughs> oh, game yeah. changer. Up to second place, a little more than a pound back of the lead. Mm. That is a big one right there. Starting the day with one over five and ending it with one over five. Still room to grow. It has not been very pretty. It has not been a lot of numbers for Fujita. There's not been a lot of info we could give anybody for Fujita right now. Davey Height was out there with him, said he was in the Bass Hotel, is what people call it, here on Lake Murray, doing something totally different. A lot of rogue roamers out a lot deeper than the rest of our other leaders in this tournament. Power pole replay of the day, a good way to seal the limit. Boy, a Fujita power pole replay of the day. Wow. That's how fast it happens.
Fujita made quick work of getting himself not just back into the top ten, right? And they're, they're tucked up in a tight second place. Maybe John Cox can do the same thing. All it takes is, takes is a giant. We had a smaller gap from second to tenth than we did from first to second just a few minutes mm -hmm. ago. Now we have a couple trying to get in there and make it even tighter than four pounds. Come on. I think I think we'll call with this guy. Come on. No, don't go in the dock. Don't go in the dock. Come on. Come on. He's getting smaller. Oh, I don't know. I mean, he looks bigger, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's, he's a. Sure. He's what, three and a half, maybe? Yeah. Or no, maybe not quite. I think it's green though, right? It's either yellow, green, or black. So he's definitely bigger than yellow, I think. Or green. So green. Oh, I've got way too much water. Blue, no, nope, blue's better. Yellow, maybe it's yellow. Yellow. Yeah, no, I didn't put floats on the other ones. But blue's definitely bigger, I think. Let's see. These guys are bigger than the one I just got. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, this one's definitely bigger, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a fish. Whitaker hooked up and. A good one, dude. <laughs> Z was back on that, or in that same region. Yeah, there's the dock. Over there. He had quite the flurry. He needs to get on another one. It could, and you know, it's one of those timing deals. You roll up there all morning, it doesn't happen, and then it happens in the last hour and a half of the day for you, and it looks like nothing, nothing bad happened today. <laughs> that is what lives here, and we should have stayed here all day. But hey. Let's get, get back in there and get us another one real quick. Close to four pounds. Yeah. Others are all under two. Jake Whitaker got a ways to go. There's about 20 spots out of the uh, 10 cut there. Yeah. But Still one more to go to his bottom line as well. Yeah, so everything, everything can change very quickly for him. He just got to find some big ones bigger than that probably in order to get himself into the top 10 before a fishing time is over for today. We do have some fishing time left, though. That is for sure, especially for the ones in the later flights. Our Shryock still hanging in there, but Kyoto Fujita, man, oh man, just about has run him down. Patrick Walters, Jason Williamson, Bernie Schultz, and all the rest, big changes on our leaderboard today. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapalon. Well, this is the day. The number 10 means everything. Be in the top 10. On this day, we'll take a look at the bottom of that leaderboard and 
Talk about who's in and who's out in just a few minutes, but right now we're gonna take you back out onto the water here at Lake Murray and Julia Fujita, who started the day in third place, is now moved up into second place in a dramatic fashion after a very slow morning. Yeah, and he is in the same spot he was in late yesterday afternoon right now. Oh, good sir. Navy full. Three, three thirty. In the lead by ounces. Wow. Nine ounces to be exact. It's over twenty pounds. And to think he gave up the first hour of competition today yeah. and then had one fish really until 11 o'clock. Right. Just thought he was done. Yeah, and really, this being the first bite right here for Fujita, and you made the comment, Ronnie, earlier, you only need five. You got all day to do it, losing really the first hour of fishing with mechanical issues. Getting it done today, Davy Height was out there earlier and said, boy, he's pretty much got free reign of this area. And we talked about Jake Whitaker living shallow on one spot the entire tournament. Well, Fujita has not done a lot of running around either. He's been really in two different, just call them spots. They're little yeah. pockets off of the main lake that we've kept our eye on him days one through three so far. Fujita obviously very, very slow morning but making up big ground late here on semifinal Saturday. Let's get out to right now, 10th place, Brandon Cobb. That's a fish. Not a big one again. Another one about the same. Another one I got away, but probably won't call. <laughs> got it, he got it. I mean, like I'm catching good ones, just not big ones. He's fat, so I mean, there's a chance, but he looks like he's about the exact same size as everything I've been catching. Don't think he's going to do it. Seems to be about 280. He's got to be 290 something. He's 297. <laughs> but we got a balance beaming with number one now. <laughs> Like, I just feel like I've had a little bad luck on just slightly smaller fish than I need to be catching.
Where we go? Say Brandon Cobb was two ounces ahead of Kenta Kamura and Jeopardy being knocked out. Kenta Kamura just caught a 314. He's over 1810 and just knocked Cobb out of wow. the top 10. Man. I wonder if Patrick Walters hooked up. Healthy sucker, dang. <clears throat> Don't need to do anything either. Man, we've caught some little fish today. Well, these are all good ones, but. did not help Patrick Walters. Let's take a look at our unofficial, according to Bass Track leaderboard, with a brand new look on the top. Kyoya Fujita has put himself on top of the leaderboard for the first time today. Hunter Schreiak now in second place. Walters, we just saw third. Jason Williamson listed as fourth. Bernie Schultz in fifth place. And uh, boy, what a story. Kyoya Fujita doing something different than anyone else and making it work, making it happen on this day. Yeah! Hook order! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Gotta show some love to Capital City Visitors Bureau Tourism and Lake Murray Country. What great host, what Indeed. great lake they have. They have allowed us to fish on for this important tournament, third stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. What a performance by a lake, by a playing field. It's venue of the year, Mark Zona, I'm telling you right now. No doubt about it, Tommy Sanders. And we were a little bit worried about 60 minutes ago that Koya Fujita was not going to make Championship Sunday. <laughs> In about 30 minutes, he is now your leader. Unofficially shows how quick things can turn around. It is going to be one of the most interesting Championship Sundays of the entire season. I think you have nailed that, Tommy. Well, I, I think we're in for a treat. That is for sure. Let's get back out on the water now. Of course, that 10 spot, that's the part That's the part of the leaderboard we're looking at. And we'll be talking about that for the next 30 minutes at length because you got to be in the top 10 to make it to tomorrow. Out to John Cox, who's currently outside that cut, but he can change that. He can change that reality. That's a call, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Did you see the other ones in there? 
Oh my gosh. I flipped it in there, it was like, boom. Guys, I think you could tell he's not far yeah, from Drayer Island State fish. Park. You can hear the festivities going on behind him. He can fish till uh, <laughs> five till three. Could you have any two polar opposite fishermen than Koya Fujita and Jack Cox <laughs> no, in the history of, not. no really. <laughs> Blue, right? For green, or no, I just put green in. Definitely two guys from a different planet. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's fun, that's what makes it fun. <laughs> Absolutely, very diverse tournament, many, many, all, many ways. All levels, all levels, we love it. Yes. Florida man, John Cox. Yeah. And one thing Davey Height has texted here in the last 30 minutes, looking at Fujita, obviously our eyes are gonna be on him. The rest of the time we have today and tomorrow on Bassmaster mm -hmm. Live, as you see him panning around with his forward facing sonar, we have heard that he has five live technology transducers on that boat mm. and the other thing i'm not kidding um the other thing about it is he has been concentrating what davy said earlier today in 10 to 15 feet of water so i think that is something pretty much nobody saw coming and we talked about could somebody find one of bait. those really oddball techniques that nobody else found in this tournament right now obviously fujita Copy. By far and away is that one. <laughs> Peak. A good one. <laughs> Tommy, we're going to slowly put together what's going on was, in that boat. I was slowly. about to say, I, you know, somebody could be fishing 15 feet away from him and still not be successful. I mean, because nobody knows what he's doing. They could be in the next cove the same depth. And, and uh, you know, it's just it's well, remarkable. Well, here's what we're on to. Okay. We're on to where he's at. Yeah. We're on to the depth. That's about all we got That's right it. now. That's all we got. That's it. That bait's laying there. I just want to see what that bait is right there. <laughs> zoom, 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 zoom. Yeah, there we go. Don't be scared. Slide on in there. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Did you see him no, slipping no. up his shirt oh, sleeve there? Yeah, I did. No, no. <laughs> you pulled a different one out, Tommy. Yeah, I bet you could pull a quarter from behind your ear, Such. Six pounder Steve Kennedy caught a while ago, got him up to 16th place. And he started in the 50s in AOI. And this this finish here, he'll he'll be inside our classic cut, usually top 40. Right now it says he's about 32nd. Mm. But Brandon Card will yeah, really late. be looking at this tournament after day Tried one. To ride the wave and crashed and burned. Day one he fell. He was 95th. He Bad. fell from our top five. To 33rd, and then coming back with 22 yesterday and 19 plus today, wow. he's back in fourth. He's actually gained a spot. Man, good year, best year for him, right? So far, yeah, he's doing well, despite all of the adversity he's had to deal with. A bad Christmas with the Golly, meningitis Hunter. and Bell's palsy. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of fish on Fujita's screen right there. Had a lot of text from folks guessing. I wonder what the weather's going to do tomorrow. Possibly hover strolling, a very finesse technique, especially for a lot of fish that aren't quite relating to the bottom. Does seem like a lot of his fish are off the bottom when he hooks them. I remember you, Mark Zona, re relating something that you had either heard in person or third person from a, from a Japanese angler uh, several years ago, talking about fishing a, a shaky head and never letting it touch the bottom. That was his yes. rule. Yeah, yeah. 
and, and yeah, and that was amazing. It was back, you know, kind of when Shaky Head was crazy, crazy, crazy popular a decade ago. And he would never, ever let his shaky head hit the bottom. It was more of a swimming it, a little bit like we're seeing Fujita do with his bait selection in this tournament. You're down there. I just can't get them suckers to bite. Which is funny because photographer Sego Seto, that's what he described it as in text, was the swimming a jig head. Yes. The only one that we've had on camera throughout this event that came close to at least cracking it in that depth zone was Tyler Rivette on day one, fishing kind of seven to 10 feet of water. Besides that, mm -hmm. we have not seen a bass past five feet of water on any other angler. Golly. It's going to cool off into the upper yep. 40s overnight and be sunny and almost breezeless early for, for several hours until the wind builds up and sun. What do you, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? What will that do? Real calm, bluebird I, conditions. I, I, I think that cold night tonight's going to kind of hurt the Drews a little bit. That are I'm, I'm guessing Drew Cook is probably concentrating on spawning largemouth. I think that cold night's going to kick that around a little bit to where they're gonna have to make hay in the afternoon. But uh, here's the here's the best, I said it this morning on FS1, they, all of these guys truly are catching so many bass. This one is too hard to call mm -hmm. who's in the driver's seat going into the last day. It will be interesting. You don't wanna miss tomorrow, that is for sure. Championship Sunday will be fabulous. We're 30 minutes away from weigh-in time. Starting to crank up here on Bassmaster.com. Toya Fujita, the man on top. But look at that 10th place. Kenta Kimura in that right now. And right below him, Brandon Cobb, John Cox, Lee Livesey, Brock Mosley, and Austin Felix. That is going to be a mad dash for those top 10 spots and a shot at the trophy tomorrow. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. The live coverage continues. We've got about the last 20 minutes of fishing here. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray. Three o'clock is check-in time for our first flight of anglers. And the weigh-in starts shortly after that right here on Bassmaster.com. And during the course of this day, Mike Iaconelli, Bryant Smith, uh, Drew Cook, Bernie Schultz have all ascended into the top 10. Doing what you're supposed to do. That's uh, and, and stay in there is what you have to do for the remainder of your time fishing today. The Kyo Fujita, the man on top, he's a big story, of course, doing something that, uh, well, we don't know every aspect of it, every dimension of it, but it sure works. Yeah, and we are really on the cusp right now, Tommy Sanders, of our fourth event, including the classic of being pretty much potentially dominated with forward-facing sonar. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. I it's... thought we were going to slip through this time, but... Next yeah, week, next week, we'll just say it next week, next week, you know, we'll keep going. You know, it's interesting. I heard another commentator in professional fishing say that that forward facing sonar wasn't going to be all that, wasn't going to dominate. And dude should have his skull checked here in the next well, year. Yeah, so. it's, it's, yeah. Let's see if anything's in there. It's... with a good fish about a half an hour ago. Needs another one though. Oh my gosh. Bunch of bluegill beds. It's 
about a pound and a half, a pound and a half out of the top ten. And he's got a 210 as his smallest. Tommy, you were talking about all those guys from 9th, 10th to down to 14th, 15th. We got to also remember we have to put Jason Williamson in that category because he is exactly right. two pounds yes. ahead of yes. the yes. baked into his on, and on yeah, his score as that reflected. Yeah, two pound culling infractions not on bash track. It will be reflected in the leaderboard, obviously. But yeah, that's he needs to call up another time just to be just to be close. I thought it was a big one, but it was a big it was a log. Hundreds right around the corner or right pretty much at the check in. He might have started fishing there, Tommy, because he heard the concert. What? You know, like he, you just mm -hmm. know, John, he might mm -hmm. have done that. Yeah. Obviously, everything we talk about on Bass Track and during the day of competition is unofficial, and they will all become official at the weigh-in today. Welcome into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge. For our last fantasy fishing kind of discussion before we eliminate the rest of the field, and we only have 10 left for Championship Sunday. Looking at, I, I guess there's a multiple ways to split the pie if you want to have the best fantasy fishing team for Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. The five buckets, Mike Iaconelli, Patrick Walters, Hunter Shryock, Matt Robertson, and Matty Wong, that equals the best team. Also, Brandon Cobb, Patrick Walters, Bryant Smith, Jason Williamson, and Todd Auten also equal the same amount. The only big difference that we need to keep an eye on, if this remains true and the standings kind of lock in where they're at, Matt Robertson could still hold the biggest bag of the tournament, which is some bonus points to his total. Uh, that could get superseded today. He wouldn't get those 40, 40 points for that. And then also big bass. Any of these anglers catch a big bass that has a chance to break that, they would get those bonus points as well. Now when we go over to the top team for Mercury Drain the Lake, this is the game mode where when you pick your angler, you only can use them one time a year. You want to make sure you obviously use them on their best week of the season if possible. What a great team for the best team so far through the middle portion of day three of this event. Patrick Walters, Brandon Cobb, two expected names to be on the best team just because of the local factor. They're also very good, uh, and they've also performed this week and shown up with that. Iconelli is another duplicate, so is Jason Williamson. Got a lot of Carolinians on here that we expected to do well. Brandon Card, like you said, Such, he went from the basement to the penthouse in terms of his points this week, uh, starting the week in 95th, and then obviously our new unofficial leader, Kyoya Fujita, and our day two leader, Drew Benton, make up the top team for Mercury Drain the Lake as well. And then also Scott Canterbury had a good finish this week after coming so close in the Bassmaster Classic our last time out. So if you didn't use Scott Canterbury at Knoxville, he wasn't too bad of a pick this week if you're trying to figure out where to put him. I know a lot of people will probably save Canterbury for Lay Lake uh, a little bit later this year. I'm playing reverse yeah, fantasy this week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah, trying, to get, trying the, to get the, I'm the doing lowest golf. score possible. Yes, yeah. we're big golf fans. Yeah, yeah. Of course. It's golf. It's golf for me. <laughs> What you showed me there was like showing the the uh, doorman at the apartment complex the, uh, the new Bentley. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. You know. Can you park my car, <laughs> sir, please? Boy, Lee Livesey just inched closer with a four pound, 12 ounce fish. He's in 12th with 20 pounds, 12 ounces today. Mm. Coming from 20th. And he came from even farther, but I think he was like 51st after day no, one. He was below the cut, and now he could finish. I don't think it's a four pounder. I Top think it's 20. Like a three and a half, three and three quarters. It'll be really close to what I felt like I needed to make tomorrow. I don't uh, feel like I might be a little short, but you just never know. I thought they'd bite a lot better with this wind. I've caught a ton of fish. I just haven't caught very many big fish. So I don't know if that was just kind of bad luck on me or if maybe the bigger ones are not biting today. I was way too afraid to throw again, but we only got like five minutes, four minutes. But it's been a good day. I've caught, I don't know how many fish, 50 fish maybe, 40, 50. So can't complain on that. Can't go 
got that many big bites. I think only one bite over four pounds, which is, with the amount of fish I caught, I wouldn't have expected that. Kind of look at the numbers game with your two leaders right now, unofficial leaders, Fujita and Shryock. Only six bass for Fujita today and only seven for yeah. Shryock, where you look at guys like Brandon Cobb and you can even say John Cox right now. So then, man, there's a lot of guys in our top 12 that have gone through crazy, crazy numbers. I hit that one green bush. Interesting to see if Hunter Shryock could make the stretches shallow happen yet again because they have reloaded every single day of this tournament. But I think today's been a, you heard Shryock say, I feel like maybe the wind has hurt the shorelines that I've caught him on the first two days of this tournament, made it happen early. But his afternoon, where he's made a lot of hay this week, his afternoon today, yeah, definitely did not play. Very, very interesting to see how that works out for Hunter Schreier. Hey, hats off to him. I mean, he's basically, if he'd made a bet that I could, I could do well in a tournament fishing with one foot on the bank, he'd have won that bet this time. Absolutely. Around. He was just terrific, terrific job of doing something a little bit different and making it work. But Kuyo Fujita, same story right there, and he's got the first place slot to prove it. Patrick Walters hanging in there all the time. We're certainly not writing him off. Jason Williamson, of course, that, that score will have to, that position will have to be adjusted once all the uh, penalties become official, so forth like that. we got a tiny bit more fishing to show you the tail end of our fishing day when we return. Yes! Yeah. No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. The first three days of this memorable tournament almost in the books. We got a weigh in yet to come and that starts very soon here. Within the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes, the first flight is gonna check in here at three o'clock local time, Eastern time. We'll get things started again with Championship Sunday tomorrow in FS1 for five and a half hours. Let you know about that as we watch John Cox tooling over to check in. Yeah, and really a little bit kind of like Groundhog Day with the events that we've had this year where it's been kind of technology going into the final day to Championship Sunday against anglers that are basically head down and fishing. And so far, talked about that a little bit before our intermission, so far this year, technology has prevailed every yeah. single event that we've covered. And the one thing I do know for sure, Tommy, Koya is not going to be able to catch two bass tomorrow and win this tournament. No, 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 not at all. It's not uh, going to happen. It's not going to be a replay of the classic, I don't think. God, I don't know. Tune in on, I feel on a like, Saturday. I feel like we might. I feel like I. I feel like I'm better than yesterday. I don't know. I mean, maybe not, but. I don't know. I can't tell. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it really depends on how big that big one yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, fair. Maybe it's five. It's more than five. Yeah. That's big. Yeah, it is like, fat. It's big, big, but it's fat. It's bigger yeah. than five. Well, I had a six five yesterday. It was humongous. But it was skinny. If he thinks he got him better than yesterday, he'll be in third place with sixty one and change. Because mm -hmm. he's a he has seventeen and change on bass track. Unless mine hasn't updated, but he had 21 2 yesterday. Yeah. Huh. There could Remember, be some. All uh, our bass track numbers are unofficial. That's why we suggest you check out the weigh in. Patrick Walters is usually a little bit low. Jason Williamson might be low today and may save him. I think Cobb's a little low. Some of those guys, I think that oh, top 10 man. cut line is going to be closer to 59 and change than 57 and a half. Mm. Maybe. Did you save me one? <laughs> I'm gonna make one more cast and I got the head in. Oh. Did 
Day one, we had 75 fish over four pounds. Day two, 65. Day. Today, we're over 50. Just hit over 50. We have six bags on Bass Track over 20 pounds right now. How many? Bass Track. How many bags over 20? Six, six bags right now on Bass Track over 20 pounds. Which would surpass the whole Okeechobee event, which was the most 20 pound bags we've had. Ah. 16, 16, at least six. And there's yeah, guys at 19 sure. plus who may be over 20. Well, it's been a day, I can tell you that. Uh, one more <laughs> shot inside the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon, and, and, and you're right, Mark Zona, I don't think the, uh, the final day is gonna play out exactly like our World Championship did about uh, three weeks ago in Knoxville, Tennessee. He had some, uh, there was some compliance, some help from the other anglers. They're not gonna help out tomorrow, I don't believe. No, I don't think so, and the one thing that you could say is big, big hats off, though, to Hunter Shryock, looking yeah. for his top finish that he's ever had on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And can those stretches, those really, really shallow stretches that he, and it's been more of a shad spawn looking kind of deal for Hunter Shryock, can they reload? The nice thing is those areas definitely had a, had a lot of pressure from other anglers, but they were doing other things. It'll be interesting to see if those areas can reload with the cold night. So I, if it was a warm night, I would say Hunter is lined up to mash him again on championship Sunday, but uh, again, you look at your unofficial leader, Koya Fujita. He only caught six bass, man. Yeah. So this one very, very hard to call going to championship Sunday. But the cool thing is a lot of diversity we are going to see on the final day of this tournament. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a real treat for us and can't wait to see what goes down. And Brandon Cobb, he caught a lot of fish today. If those just happened to be the right ones, the right ones, man, oh, man, he'd be the guy. A hundred percent. It's cool. I think that I think that we'll probably have four new anglers in our top 10 that we haven't got to see this week with the combination of Iconelli, Bryant Smith, uh, Drew Cook, Bernie Schultz. And then even if someone below has a little more like Kenta Kamara, Lee Livesey, to see these guys get better every single day. Magic could, you know, some patterns go down. Some patterns come up and to see somebody maybe making a charge with more fish coming to them or their areas popping off a little more, we could really see somebody come from 7th, 8th, ninth place to maybe win tomorrow. All right, what are you hoping to find out at the weigh-in, Such? Oh, who's actually up there? There's five guys not on Bass Track who, if they had a 20, 20-pound, 20 22-pound bag, there could jump go. in our top 10. you got to watch the weigh-in. Be there. All right, be there. That's a, be there tomorrow, too, because it's going to be a good day. We're going to start at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Give you a fair and, warning about that for five hours on FS1. Yeah. And, Tommy, I did. I asked Davey. I said, look, we're not going to get any help in that boat right there tomorrow. We're not going to get any help finding out what the exact lure is. And I, I asked Davey, I said, can you go up and just get us a picture for FS1? we got a big, long day tomorrow. Just get us a pic, not of the baits that are laying on the deck of his boat, but the bait that's been in his hand. So you never know, we may have that tomorrow morning, or not at all. <laughs> we can hope, we can hope. Maybe pay a kid to kind of sneak up there and grab it. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of ways to do that. What a great lake. What Lake Murray can't say enough yes. about this incredible, incredible venue here. It's been worth the wait a dozen years away, and man, oh man, it's gotten good in the meantime. And with how our top five is laid out and the patterns we've seen, some of the visuals we've had, Five and a half hours on FS1 tomorrow. It could be a good show, a fun time to see how many guys have had their chance in the top spot on Bass Track throughout this event. Like Dave Mercer said, there's going to be 40 very disappointed guys that they're not going to be able to fish on Lake Murray for one more day. Of course, the weigh-in, uh, speaking of Dave Mercer, starts shortly after 3 p.m. check-in time, which is just about upon us. Tomorrow, we remind you, five and a half hours live on F FS1. So check that out starting at 8 a.m. Eastern time. And after that, uh, Bassmaster Live continues on Bassmaster.com and also the, uh, the Fox Digital platforms. And Tubi on the Yeti hot seat. Well, there he is right there. Oh, yeah. Yoya Fujita. We'll see how he weathers it today. So much to learn from that weigh-in. Thank you so much for being with us on another third great day in a row of Bassmaster Live. We look very much forward to tomorrow, and we will see you at 8 Eastern in the morning. <laughs>